only happened to find the chairperson of the house and the deputy chair because our issues was that we should consider the annual report now that there's no cost implications. It's virtual meeting. We we'll have loved you to even form part of our meeting during the day for you to also assist us in assessing whatever the department has been telling us, it's whether it's actual or what is happening on the ground. Uh, we considered the annual report of the department affairs earlier during the day. And then the issues that we have noted uh, is the widespread unhappiness amongst traditional leaders in respect of the lack of clarity on the place and role of the institution of traditional leadership in the district development model. Uh, at some point we did oversight and uh, I thank uh, Inkosi, Sipo Matlangu and the team and the other colleagues from National House, including the the, the, the colleagues from the provincial houses where we visited the province during our past two oversight. As we consulted with traditional leaders, there are things that we pick up that we have been of concern to all of us. Uh, the issue around the district development model concept, there seems to be a misunderstanding. And to us, we have the view that uh, there's been an in it's indicative of an adequate consultation. We found this during our recent visit in Gauteng and uh, in KwaZulu Natal. Then the other issue, if colleagues you have gone through the annual report, the minister states that the institution of traditional leadership is key partner in the implementation of the district development model. However, based on our observation and the reality on the ground, it does not reflect this sense of partnership as many traditional leaders feel alienated from the district development model. And this includes the leadership of the National House of Traditional Leaders, which the minister envisaged playing the role of support and oversight in the district development model. The other issue that we have picked up as we interacted with the Department of Traditional Affairs was around the issue of tools of trade for yourselves to enable yourselves to participate effectively in the business of government, which to us, it remains a perennial issue, especially now during this COVID-19, where virtual meetings are the new normal. Uh, it's our expectation you should also be able to hold meetings with your uh, tribal council and any other stakeholder the way we are doing it as parliament. So to us, we still feel there's still much work to, to be done to bridge this rural urban digital divide. The other issue that we felt is of key importance that we must also deal it, with it tonight is the slow implementation of the resolutions emanating from the 2017 uh, traditional leaders in the, uh, which is also then contributing to all these challenges that yourselves as traditional leaders are, are facing. The other issue that one want to also deal with, it's in our previous engagements with the department. The committee members have on several occasions expressed a need to have a more discussion on the work of the Department of Traditional Affairs to facilitate better understanding of its mandates. This includes in particular, the work of the National House of the Traditional Leaders, which is a sub-program of the DTA under Institutional Support and Coordination Program. This, this is the reason why you are all here today so that we have an agenda dedicated to discuss the work of the National House of Traditional Leadership. To us as a committee, such discussion is very crucial as the committee reinvigorates its oversight role over the institution of traditional leadership in order to affirm its role 
and place in the cooperative governance system. I always say that you are unlike us, our, ourselves will get elected, but your good selves, you have the, you are, we were born leaders. And then my colleague, uh, Honorable Lucen sum it better to say, we will never wish you away because you are here to stay. And to us, you are also part of the governance uh, structure. So I think this committee is best placed to then always have uh, interactions with your good self. And also we've changed the, our oversight model to say whenever we do oversight, we must refrain from only focusing on municipalities, but uh, also focus on this institution because we are the Committee for Cooperative Governance and, and Traditional Affairs. Uh, I want to welcome all of you to this meeting. I will quickly only deal with the apologies that I'm having at my disposal. Uh, Honorable uh, Mamkize Pratikawa, she has a bereavement in the family. And then Honorable Khronevat has got an other prior engagement. And then uh, the minister has apologized to other line functions, including the deputy minister, who's also attending some meetings, prior engagement, and then the DG of cooperative governance is also attending to some uh, uh, other matters. Then I want to also acknowledge the presence of yourself, Chairperson uh, Ngozi S. E. Matlangu, together with the Deputy Chairperson Ngozi Kazim Kaoli, and then the other members of the National House. Uh, of traditional leadership, I know Nkisika uh, Zingonyama is with us, Nkosi Ndevu, Nkosi Hadisi Dumedi, Nkosi Siatolo, Nkosi Hasiwoni, Nkosi Shinga, and then Pumalanga House Chairperson Nkosi Ngomane, and the Deputy Chairperson Nkosi CM Matlangu. I want to also welcome uh, the delegation from Costa Lesa, and then also to welcome you, Jose Mavi. I've seen you from Northwest. And then, uh, Honorable Zolanem Kiva, you are the General Secretary of Contralesa. And I know you are the leader of the delegation. And as and when you, you make the presentation, then you introduce your other team members. Our agenda will, will be as, as follows. Uh, the first item on the agenda will be the briefing on the work done by National House of Traditional Leaders, then uh, Cong Congress of Traditional Leadership of South Africa will have an input as well, and then we'll have discussions and way forward and closure. Uh, I know Contraleza is going to address this matter. Of late, uh, 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 General Secretary of Contralesa, we had noted some media reports and the uh, issues that are quite uh, disturbing in the sense that we are still in level one and COVID-19 is here. And then there were issues around your province, uh, the Eastern Cape and the issue of initiation schools. And then uh, there's been concern all over the country to see what as a committee are we doing, especially when this portfolio committee is responsible for the enforcement of COVID-19 regulations. So these are the matters I should think as and when you address us, we'll be able to deal with them so that uh, you also put the committee in confidence to also understand all these things that are happening. With these few words, I want to welcome all of you. I want to plead with some of the, uh, our honorable distinguished uh, traditional leadership, Kalelo Sidumedi to mute your microphone. Uh, uh, there are a lot of you here. I'm just mentioning the, the leadership because I've seen that, uh, that's as I'm saying they are now muting. And you only then, uh, the one of Halelo Sidumedi is still not yet muted. 
So if microphones are not muted, they disrupt the meeting, including uh, the speakers, including Jose uh, Hasiboni. Uh, the, 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 the microphone is not muted. Can I plead with all of you as part of the house room that you Kosimabe, can you meet your microphone as well? I can, you can even hear the dog barking from Kosimabe. So that's the issues that I will plead with all of you to say all the time. Can you please mute your microphones? You will only unmute the microphones when you are recognized by the chairperson to speak. The mic of Jose Hasiboni is still not muted. I'll plead that whoever is closer to him, whoever can text a message so that he mutes his microphone. So without wasting time, I think I'll hand over to you, Inkosi Matlangu, the National House Chair, maybe to do the introduction. I don't know what is your arrangement. And then you make a presentation, also bring any other matters that you feel the committee need to consider. I'll hand over to you, Ikosi Matlangu. Chairperson, I think my apology was not read well. I mm. said I'm here attending as Deputy Minister, and but I will leave at 9 o'clock if the meeting is not yet over by 9 o'clock, 21 hours. That's why I, I didn't even read your apology, <laughs> knowing that by 9 we should be done. I didn't read it. I was going to say it when I realized the time you are here. Oh, I didn't acknowledge you. My apology to you. Not at all. But I Not at all. <laughs> <laughs> but you were with us. Uh, now, because this is your constituents, you want to be acknowledged. You are welcome, Deputy Minister. Thank you. You always acknowledge <laughs> me. I don't know what's happening today when you say you open the visit. It's fine. I mean... <laughs> uh, it's in, in the absence, I call you in the visit. <laughs> Okay, welcome, DM. It's good to have you. Let them uh, proceed with the meeting. Um, uh, thank you, uh, Honorable Chair uh, of the committee. Um, let me also acknowledge uh, the Deputy Minister who is amongst us, uh, Deputy Minister Babela, uh, the Deputy Chairperson of the National House, Executive Committee members uh, of the National House, chairpersons and deputy chairpersons of provinces that are part of this gathering, uh, members of the National House, uh, the leadership of Contra Lesa and uh, the delegation, uh, members of the portfolio committee. Um, good evening. Um, Chair, let me first uh, thank you for, for giving us this opportunity to come and present and also making sure that uh, the sector in its majority is part of this uh, engagement. I think there's been, been many issues uh, or many firsts of its kind engagements uh, that we've had. Because the uh, chairperson, yes, ma chairperson, I'm told you are live on television. The South Africans would love to see your picture. Can I... you put your camera on? My my camera is supposed to be on, Chair. I don't okay. know why, uh, but I have put my Let's camera. Let's move a bit up. Okay. Move a bit up, up a bit. Yes, there you go. You thank you. Now. Yes. No, thank, <laughs> okay. you. Thank, thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you so much, uh, Chair. Yes, I was saying that uh, there's been many firsts of its kind. Um, uh, since we started engaging with you, I think we... Uh, had a workshop uh, last year with you, and of which it was for the first time that uh, we had to sit with the committee, talk about issues that are affecting the sector. And I believe that that was the best way for you to understand the concerns uh, of the sector and also its operation. And you've also invited us to your um, uh, uh, over okay. five uh, programs, and we highly appreciate that, uh, Chair, you know, because we also got to, um, you know, 
meet other traditional leaders that are coming from different provinces that we have not met uh, as this, this leadership of the house. I think we are mainly used or accustomed to members of the house and also um, provincial members, but we got to see other traditional leaders and we were able to uh, even tell them of things that they were not aware of uh, that the National House has been doing or is uh, currently embarking on. I believe that that was uh, one of the greatest opportunities uh, that you gave us. And uh, now, today we are meeting here as a collective traditional leaders uh, with uh, members of parliament and being able to talk about issues uh, that we believe are pertinent uh, to the sector and that we believe that would assist us uh, going forward. I think we are all aware that we are during a, a COVID uh, period and um, this period, uh, COVID-19 was not invited by any, was not invited by any of us, but uh, we found ourselves in the middle of a pandemic. And that pandemic has not only uh, taken many lives in our communities, uh, it has taken lives of our loved ones, uh, it has taken um, lives of people that we know, uh, people that we are close to, and many people that are in rural areas. I think uh, even more than the figures that uh, we have been seeing uh, from government, because we saw a huge spike uh, in our areas during uh, this period uh, of people that were buried, uh, of which it showed that it had a great impact uh, in rural areas. We've seen many businesses closing down. We've seen many people in rural areas uh, that are currently out of employment uh, because of this uh, big uh, pandemic. We've been exposed as a country and I'll say uh, me and you and all of us that are in this collective, I think uh, we, I can safely say that we failed our people because COVID has exposed us that uh, uh, our people remain the poorest of the poor. Uh, poverty is still a big issue uh, in our rural communities. Um, you know, the inequalities were seriously exposed uh, during uh, this COVID uh, period. And I believe that we ought to do things differently from now going forward. Uh, we ought to prioritize more uh, our people. I believe that we have not done enough to change the situation in rural areas. So it calls on all of us uh, to reprioritize, to think out of the box and see if we can do uh, things uh, differently. But I think, uh, uh, Chair, I am supposed to be uh, presenting our uh, report. Uh, we have combined uh, our quarterly report, uh, uh, two quarters into one being from the 1st of April uh, until the 30th uh, of September uh, for the 2020-21 uh, financial, financial year. Um, I'll start, uh, Chair, that, um, you, know, uh, you know, I've already given a background of how this year started and we were put uh, into a state of disaster, uh, which subsequently led to the lockdown uh, due to COVID-19 pandemic that I just spoke um, uh, about. Uh, we had to uh, participate as well when um, regulations uh, were, were made. Um, and, you know, yeah, we had to craft a program uh, that was going to assist uh, some of our members on how we are going to operate uh, during um, uh, this uh, COVID period. We had to work uh, differently. Uh, we had to embrace a new normal uh, where we've been conducting our business uh, through visual platforms and, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, through visual uh, platforms. So even though this new way caught us unprepared uh, as a country, because as a sector, most of us live in um, uh, rural areas where network is a serious uh, challenge. So it has been a very uh, big challenge to get all the members to participate uh, under this uh, new normal. And it has been very difficult. And also considering the issue of the tools of trade uh, that you spoke about uh, uh, earlier. Uh, but yes, we've tried uh, to do our work uh, as the house uh, under the circumstances uh, that one uh, has spoken about. So 
we had to uh, combine our report, uh, which uh, report that will look at um, the activities uh, of the house and activities that were done by individual members uh, of the house because we are all working uh, 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 from, from, from home. Uh, we are all aware, Chair, that uh, uh, on, on the 22nd of March, the President uh, uh, declared a state of uh, disaster and uh, there was a lockdown. We were put under lockdown on the 27th uh, of March. Um, so the sector of the economy was closed. Uh, no one could travel. Um, so, but as a house, uh, we were requested that we needed uh, to assist government and also to assist our communities uh, in fighting uh, the spread of uh, this uh, pandemic, uh, the animal that uh, came into, into our being, being COVID-19, um, uh, we had to make plans um, and of how we're going to deal with this um, issue. Uh, I said earlier that we had to work through uh, virtual uh, visual means. Um, so we we had a plan that uh, uh, would cover the whole uh, sector on how we're going to operate uh, during uh, this COVID-19. I think uh, many traditional leaders were leading from the front, others uh, following the plan uh, that we had in terms of making sure that people uh, were abiding by the, uh, you know, the respective uh, regulations and rules uh, that uh, uh, were put in, in different uh, alert levels uh, that government uh, 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 introduced us. I think uh, we had to encourage our people to follow all COVID-19 uh, protocols, um, you know, making people aware of the symptoms, uh, identifying areas of uh, quarantine, um, encouraging our people to test those that uh, were, I, you know, that were feeling some symptoms uh, of COVID uh, within within them, um, encouraging those that if they are those that are positive, that they should uh, self uh, isolate. And I think some traditional councils uh, even identified uh, uh, quarantine quarantine sites. Um, we also had to be stringent in other areas where we worked with uh, law uh, makers to make sure that uh, those that were breaking. Uh, the regulations uh, were were dealt with. You remember the weddings uh, that were uh, had to be stopped, uh, where traditional leaders intervened um, in 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 the areas. The, as the National House, uh, together with the Civil Rights Commission, we met uh, Minister of Culture uh, that was on the 17th uh, of March, um, where we were to discuss. Uh, ways of how we could cap the spread of corona uh, virus. Uh, we requested the minister to intervene uh, on the water shortages uh, that we're facing in rural areas. Um, we also um, had to speak on behalf of small businesses because uh, remember when we were at alert level five, uh, all hawkers and small businesses were closed, uh, but big businesses were the biggest beneficiaries uh, on those, uh, uh, you know, on the closure uh, of, of, of the economy. So we had to uh, speak to the minister uh, to um, uh, speak to uh, the minister of trade and industry and minister of small business to uh, allow hawkers and uh, small businesses uh, to be opened as well uh, during, uh, during that, uh, uh, that, 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 that period. Um, we also worked in terms of uh, the development of guidelines uh, for cultural and religious activities uh, during uh, this period. Uh, we looked at issues of initiation, uh, funerals, weddings, celebrations, rituals, churches, water challenges, um, and, and means of communications uh, within rural areas to be able to um, uh, warn our people of any dangers that they could be uh, uh, facing. Um, we also pushed that uh, local houses should be included uh, uh, in the COVID-19 district responses and uh, provincial chairpersons as well said uh, on the uh, coronavirus um, 
uh, councils that were in in um, uh, different uh, uh, provinces. Uh, we also had consultations um, with the president uh, uh, on the state of disaster and the role that we had to play uh, as a sector. The meeting was held uh, on the 24th uh, of March, uh, just after the announcement uh, of um, a lockdown. Um, we've also participated uh, in, in MINMEC uh, as the house. We participated in the presidential coordinating committee. Uh, the dates, uh, uh, it, you know, it, it, there was about four presidential coordinating committee meetings in, during the changing of each and every alert level uh, as the house. Um, uh, we, we participated um, um, in, in, in that. We've also, uh, Jim, uh, through virtual means, discussed ways of how we could come up with uh, socio-economic uh, development models to try and cap uh, the impact uh, of, uh, you know, the, the, the right ravaging impact on, on our economy in, 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 in rural uh, areas. We were also very strong communication chair, uh, where there was um, uh, media statements that were issued by the House, um, uh, you know, after the call by the president. Uh, we've been all over uh, radios, different radio stations, and TV, ENCA, um, warning our people about this COVID-19, uh, advising them on, on the COVID-19 uh, protocols and how they could uh, uh, keep themselves uh, safe as, as, uh, as communities. We also participated on the Sikaba uh, COVID-19 campaign uh, that was a, a program by the Solidarity Fund that was trying to assist our people in dealing with um, uh, the coronavirus uh, uh, pandemic. Uh, we also uh, reworked the agrarian revolution uh, model uh, after we realized that um, uh, giving people food parcels was not enough. We had to assist our communities uh, to be able to uh, produce their own food uh, during uh, this period. I think I'm one of those uh, as well within the sector, including other traditional leaders that uh, produced uh, their own food uh, during COVID-19 and were able to assist uh, our communities where we planted um, leafy uh, vegetables um, that were, you know, that were in season uh, during uh, COVID-19 uh, period and were able to assist quite a number of um, uh, people. So we've uh, reviewed the agrarian revolution uh, concept uh, document, uh, because the previous document that we had on um, uh, agrarian revolution did not work very well. There were problems with the CWP uh, program uh, where they were using, um, uh, uh, I think, their service providers or agencies to be able to do their work. And I think uh, uh, there was a lot of things that went wrong. Uh, with the agencies uh, that were used. And I think uh, the department is currently trying to, to deal with that. That's why now we've had to change the model uh, of agrarian revolution. Um, uh, so that model uh, is uh, about uh, to be implemented. Um, we've also worked with the, Sol approached the Solidarity Fund uh, to assist us uh, uh, in dealing with uh, food security uh, issues. Uh, there was a five hectare program that we worked on and uh, uh, with the Department of Agriculture and Rural Development. And I think uh, uh, we were worried as a sector that uh, once you start including uh, rural development, uh, the program might uh, stall. Uh, and uh, I think chairpersons uh, of provinces that are here will attest to the fact that yes, we did uh, stall and the project did not go um, according to plan, but we worked on a funding proposal document uh, with the Solidarity Fund, um, and we also looked at how uh, that model, uh, the funding model, would work with the district development uh, model, as this district development model was supposed to include uh, traditional leaders and make it easy uh, for the agrarian revolution uh, to be implemented, because I think uh, uh, different districts were supposed to be profiled in traditional councils were supposed to be profiled and that would have made it easier uh, for us 
uh, to you know yeah, for, for us to be able to to implement uh, the the new agrarian revolution uh, model that uh, that we came up with and i think we believe that through the solidarity fund this agrarian revolution model will be realized uh, hoping that other partners uh, rural development and others uh, will in 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 you know will start participating proper uh, within within this program we are a bit worried uh, chair that um, their partnership is not uh, as clear as we would want it uh, to be uh, because they are the lead uh, department in this and um, we we are not uh, that uh, compatible with the way uh, they've been uh, 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 working working with us uh, there's many traditional leaders chair amongst us that are that have led uh, by example that have been planting and working with their communities making sure that uh, food uh, is um, uh, uh, sec sec secured. So, um, as I said, that we have many traditional leaders that have contributed to food security. Others uh, have even went as far as uh, identifying uh, partners uh, that uh, could assist in terms of social relief uh, in communities um, where we've been giving food parcels uh, ourselves uh, as traditional leaders. Uh, either through partners, others um, uh, using their own funds um, as, 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 as a sector. So there's been a lot of work. There's been pictures that have been shown within uh, the National House where different traditional leaders were physically working and making sure that uh, their communities uh, were given food uh, during, during this uh, period. I can count. Princess Khabu, uh, um, um, as well, also did uh, a lot of work through uh, part partnerships uh, that they had. Um, uh, they've done a whole lot of work in making sure that their communities were given um, uh, uh, food. So that has been done through partnerships with your uh, old mutuals, your Department of Social Development. Uh, I must say, Chair, that the Department of Social Development. Uh, through the deputy minister has been uh, the most uh, has been the shining example. In fact, uh, in terms of uh, government intervention uh, in rural areas, your Princess Kabo Foundation, your Kaiser Mutaung Junior Foundation, Nelson Mandela Foundation, Kahisano NPO, uh, and and many others, your Elim Dads that have been working in partnership with us uh, as traditional leaders to make sure that uh, uh, we were. Uh, providing social relief and providing food um, in, 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 in our areas. In terms of monitoring a uh, role that the uh, sector played uh, in, in, in communities, um, we, all traditional leaders were uh, performing essential services. Uh, permits were also given to some headmen, uh, you know, so that we could uh, effect adherence, uh, adherence to lockdown uh, rules within um, communities, even though there were concerns in other areas that um, uh, focus was on municipal councils and the institution of traditional leaders was not given enough powers to be able to uh, make it easier for the community to work uh, because those traditional councils are the closest to the community, but because they were closed, uh, many people could not get uh, services, even though there was one or two uh, headmen that were given um, uh, permits to be able to uh, uh, to work, you know, in a skeleton way, traditional councils did uh, provide a bit of uh, services, um, but we also faced uh, 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 challenges, financial challenges as traditional councils. You would uh, know that uh, other traditional councils do collect uh, funds from communities uh, through uh, levies or through um, sites uh, that, you know, permissions to occupy. So we were still expected to pay our staff, uh, but traditional councils did not have money. And that, uh, uh, the, you know, that was brought to us as the National House. Uh, we wrote a letter to, to the department, uh, to the DG, and uh, it was supposed to be discussed with the HODs, but we never got any assistance as uh, traditional councils to be able to do our work uh, uh, from government. So hence, one is appreciative of uh, the role that was played by your social development with its partners in terms of making sure that uh, uh, we are able to do 
a, 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 a bit of work. So we continued uh, as the institution to work during those difficult uh, times that, uh, uh, to make sure that traditional communities receive the necessary support uh, in, 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 our, in our areas. Uh, in terms of partnerships, uh, Chair, with other organizations that I uh, spoke about, uh, I did say that we approached uh, the Solidarity Fund, um, uh, and there are a few projects that we were able to do uh, with the Solidarity Fund. We requested the Solidarity Fund to purchase loud hailers for all 882 traditional councils. Those loud hailers were distributed so that uh, you know, traditional leaders could communicate uh, and uh, you know, pass information to their communities, um, uh, you know, during the, the COVID uh, period. Uh, we're able to request 20,000 uh, food vouchers uh, to the tune of 14 million rand, uh, where in each and every traditional council, all the 882, there are 22 families that were given vouchers of 700 rand each uh, because of the request that we made to the Solidarity Fund. We are also working on a program that will deal with farming input scheme uh, where the Solidarity Fund has ring fenced 100 million rents uh, that will benefit 57 families or households within the 882 um, uh, tra tra traditional, traditional councils. Um, there's also been uh, some, some work uh, that uh, we uh, have, back, have embarked on with the Department of Rural Development uh, where they, uh, the minister on the 8th of April um, met with the institution um, and they were coming up with a relief a, a smallholder farmers beneficiation program um, and they wanted the institution to assist in terms of making sure that we talk to our people to apply and we make sure that there are forms for our people to apply and all that was done uh, where application forms uh, you know the period of application forms was open from the 7th uh, of April, and many of our communities uh, did apply, even though there, uh, uh, there are problems uh, that were identified by the department and that we also identified as a sector that this program also benefited uh, your established businesses instead of uh, uh, benefiting our own communities. The Lotteries Commission was also uh, approached uh, to, to work with us, um, where we wrote a letter on the 4th of June um, and we also signed an MOU with the National Lotteries that says that uh, applications that will be coming from traditional communities are given a priority. So we have pushed uh, the National Lotteries to uh, assist uh, rural communities. And I know that there's quite a number of communities that have applied uh, for funding. Some of them uh, have received funding, but others, uh, they, are still, they are still waiting uh, for, for funding. We've also approached uh, MTN because, uh, Chair, you would uh, understand that uh, in terms of tools of trade, uh, the institution is still way behind. We, uh, you know, yeah, we we don't have uh, tools of trade, and uh, so we've decided that we needed to uh, uh, um, talk to partners like your MTN that donated uh, tablets. Uh, to us and data, uh, of which is something that uh, traditional leaders are complaining about even now that uh, we are holding mutual meetings, but in most cases they would not even have data for us to be able to participate uh, in these um, uh, virtual meetings. There was also another partnership that we've entered into uh, uh, with a company called Push Telegraph um, uh, that is supposed to do an audit. Uh, there are towers in rural areas and those towers in most cases, they are not paying their Jews uh, to traditional councils. So uh, an audit has been done. We've been pushing uh, your cell phone companies like your Vodacoms and your MTNs, of which I think even for now, we are still struggling. Uh, there's been uh, lawyers' letters that have been written to them to comply and start paying uh, what needs to be paid to traditional councils. We are still experiencing challenges uh, from those companies uh, up until today, uh, Chair, to make sure that they, at least there is some funds that will assist traditional councils to be able to do their work and be able to assist uh, their own uh, communities. I said earlier that the Department of Social Development has been a shining example uh, in terms of those departments that are implementing Section 20 of uh, traditional leader, 
you know, the framework I got regional uh, leaders. Um, the Deputy Minister of Hopane Zulu um, has done so much in terms of making sure that uh, she gives different traditional councils, uh, PPEs, uh, that ECD, uh, early childhood development centers are given PPEs in rural areas. In fact, she's been extremely close uh, with the sector. There's so much uh, that has been done uh, between us and the department through the village to village uh, program, the pink drive uh, that she has uh, implemented. She's even donated um, uh, water tanks in different areas, working with different partners. So she's really made a serious uh, change um, uh, and contribution uh, in many um, uh, rural, rural areas. On the issue of customary um, initiation, uh, 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 during this period, uh, after we were put on the state of disaster, uh, we met as a sector, we consulted uh, widely and, and decided, we even consulted with the presidency. And after that consultation uh, and consulting with our own members, we were able to convince traditional leaders, uh, communities, uh, that we should suspend um, the initiation period uh, during a uh, winter season and of which our people did listen to us, but there are a few unscrupulous uh, characters that uh, opened up initiation schools that was some in Gauteng, and I was told that in the Eastern Cape, there were a few uh, that opened, but uh, I think uh, the house in the Eastern Cape and also uh, traditional leaders in Gauteng, uh, working with law enforcement agencies, made sure that uh, all those uh, schools were closed. And traditional leaders have been monitoring to make sure that uh, we did not have illegal uh, initiation schools in their areas and they were able to uh, give two reports um, uh, to, uh, to, yeah, to, 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 to the sector. Um, monitoring of funerals and other customer events, I think uh, uh, I stated earlier that there was a lot of work that was done by traditional leaders to make sure that uh, people are in line with regulations uh, on funerals, we're able to guide our communities in terms of protocols uh, of making sure that the prescribed number uh, was followed, even though it was very difficult to monitor each and every funeral. As I said earlier, we had so many funerals uh, that were happening in traditional councils. It was a bit difficult uh, for us to monitor all of them, but I think uh, the sector did very well uh, in, uh, in, yeah, in talking to communities and also making sure that uh, even other customer practices that were supposed to be practiced uh, during uh, COVID-19 uh, were, were not practiced. The, our committee on culture, uh, uh, on traditions and culture, also uh, assisted in terms of drafting uh, regulations uh, on, on funerals, um, you know, to assist um, uh, our government and make sure that our people do adhere uh, to uh, to yeah to to these um, uh, regulations that that um, that were that were mentioned um yeah you know, Jeb, as i spoke um, earlier about uh, the donations that have been made by 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 the department so yeah we've done very well with the department of social services i'm uh, repeating myself there just to emphasize it um there was also a rural safety in bizo uh, that uh, we had attended uh, with um, the Minister of Police and Commissioner in an area called Normandy in KZN where a farmer was murdered. But we were there, Chair, to make sure that we do not only speak on behalf of farmers, but we speak on behalf of communities that are living in those farms that are killed on a daily basis, that are subjected to a very difficult working conditions uh, uh, by, by, by those farmers. And, and I think it was, the message was clear that uh, when we talk about uh, rural safety, we do not talk about farm matters only, but we talk about um, uh, the whole uh, uh, safety uh, for, for our, for our um, uh, rural communities. Uh, we also held a dialogue for women uh, in, 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 in Pumalanga. Uh, province, uh, that dialogue was to contribute to the national calendar on key programs such as women's issues and heritage celebrations. Um, and we 
We also uh, 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 had our uh, national heritage and spoke about uh, uh, the role that has been played by women, you know, in terms of preserving our, our heritage and things that we needed to do uh, to empower our women uh, during, during that dialogue. It was a very um, uh, eye-opener, uh, you know, for us as a sector to get to understand um, um, the issues that uh, our women uh, are concerned with uh, within the sector and issues that uh, we needed uh, to deal with um, um, in, in, in um, you know, that we needed to deal with that we're affecting um, uh, our women and also discussed a bit on issues that we had to deal with uh, from the men's perspectives that we thought are contributing uh, towards, um, you know, femicides and uh, gender-based uh, violence and some of the things that we are doing as a sector that seem to be perpetrating, um, uh, uh, you know, perpetrating gender-based uh, violence uh, in, in our areas. In, term of, in terms of commemoration events, um, you know, to, we, we also participated um, in, in commemorative uh, events, and those events were meant to contribute to the national calendar on key programs, um, uh, on, on heritage celebrations, um, and, and other uh, commemorative events that were there that uh, some of our members were able to attend and uh, were able to highlight uh, some of the roles that uh, were played by the sector. And uh, we also had to engage with the Department uh, of Culture and Sports to try and identify a role that could be played by the sector, as we are all aware that um, the sector is a custodian of culture. And being custodian of culture, uh, we needed to play um, an, a, 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 a key role uh, within these commemorative events that we normally host uh, as a country and be uh, the drivers of those uh, events to be able to highlight our culture and protect uh, our culture. In conclusion, Chair, the National House continues to execute its mandate through a combination of virtual platforms and contact sessions and also participate in IGR structures and partner with other stakeholders to ensure that traditional communities' needs are taken care of. And we are doing this, Chair, with very, very uh, limited uh, resources. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much, Chairperson of the National House of the Traditional Leadership. And let me also well take this opportunity to welcome Queen Rebecca Como from the Consign uh, Kingdomship Queenship. Uh, she she better to log in. She just joined us after we started the meeting. Can I allow Condrolesa to make a presentation? I, I know you might have not prepared anything. Uh, I think we're going to do much better in future, but I should think uh, there are issues, uh, honorable giver, that you can want to share with the committee that you think they are current, pertinent for the committee's attention and any other things that you feel that needs to be brought to the committee uh, attention. Can I hand over to you? Uh, thank you, Chair. I hope that you can hear me clearly. Yes. Can you hear me, Chairperson? I can hear and even see you properly. Oh, that's even better, Chair. Yes. Uh, Chairperson, Honorable Faith Mutambi, the Chairperson of the PC on COCTA, uh, together with the members of the committee, um, I would like to take this opportunity to greet the Chairperson of the National House of Traditional Leaders in Gosisi Pomashlangu as well as the Deputy Chairperson in Goskazim Shaul, and all the members of the House, including provincial houses as well as uh, local houses. Let me 
also take this opportunity to tender the apology of the president of Contralesa, Hoshi Matu Pamukwena, as well as the deputy president, Hoshi Nyalala Pilane, who could not be here. Uh, because we only received the invitation indeed, as you have indicated, Chair, only around midday uh, today. We do appreciate, however, Chair, the invitation as Contra Lesser um, for this particular engagement, because we see this platform as a very important platform for us uh, to compare notes, to share views, as well as to communicate things that we think are very important uh, to be considered by your very important committee, which is responsible for governance, particularly at a local level, as well as in, uh, in particular the traditional areas. Allow me, Chair, to acknowledge the leadership of Contralesa that has joined me uh, this evening here. And of course, many of them could not because of the short notice, as I have indicated. We have amongst us uh, in Kosi, Ntlagani Pomapumulo, who is the provincial chairs, who is the provincial secretary of Contralesa in KwaZulu Natal province. We also have amongst us Ngosimuelo uh, Nongonyana, who is the chairman of Contralesa in the Eastern Cape. We also have the provincial secretary of Contralesa in the Eastern Cape, Ngosim Kanyiseli Tutumayo. They are amongst us, and I hope that some of our members will also join us going forward. Chairperson, indeed, we have not prepared the presentation because we felt that uh, we needed to hear uh, and uh, give full attention to the presentation that was going to be made by the House. And I must preface um, with this fact that the House pretty much represents our sector at a government level. And therefore, we work very much constructively and progressively with the House because together we are twins of the sector in the management of the national question in South Africa. And therefore allow me to appreciate uh, the good presentation that has been made by Ngos Matlangu, which is a well thought through presentation which gives a greater picture of what they have done, particularly during this difficult time of the outbreak of the coronavirus. And indeed we have been working with them. And when the president was meeting and consulting with the, with the institution of traditional leadership, all of those engagements were happening um, with us being present and with us taking an active role in that particular regard. Chairperson, you can see that uh, the presentation made by Ngos Mashangu is indeed an event-based uh, presentation. And I'm, I'm highlighting that fact that uh, the house is under-resourced. Even though that it is under-resourced, it is able to take uh, nothingness into somethingness. With the little resources that are available to the National House of Traditional Leaders, as well as provincial houses, the traditional leaders through their determination, the tenacity and the commitment to serve the interests of the rural communities and traditional communities of South Africa, they go beyond actually what they have to engage business, to engage other departments, to coordinate all departments as they seem to be working in silos to ensure that they come into the party and do what is expected of them to do. This point leads me to a very critical point, Chair. In 2009, as Contralesa, we really engaged the African National Congress, the liberation movement of this country, of which we ourselves, we are born in the womb of that liberation struggle as Contralesa. We, in our engagement, we insisted on the establishment of the Department of Traditional Affairs. And uh, this department was then gazetted in 2009 and we are quite very happy with that great achievement. But Chairperson, I must highlight that uh, be that as it may, the department itself has not been given requisite budget to deal with issues of programming as well as the critical support, as well as strategic support to the institution of traditional leadership in the country. The bulk of the budget really 
is a budget that deals with the wage bill as well as the tools of trade in the department. So we want to put it to the portfolio committee that um, you must do all you can to ensure that that department is given the budget because it is being set up for failure, Chairperson. Without a budget, the national department is unable to make the critical intervention and interventions in, in the respective uh, traditional communities of the country. Like I say that the national house in itself, it is also under-resourced and, and this particular view uh, extends uh, to, to the provincial houses as well as uh, the local houses, Chairperson. We want to appeal to the committee again to ensure that uh, the house has, has, has maintained a budget of about 20 million. Since its establishment, you know, it hasn't really grown uh, to the extent that they don't have real critical money, critical resources to ensure that they, they can be able to assist our communities and drive a developmental agenda in the country. One of the things that we have highlighted, Chairperson, which it is our role as Contralesa to communicate it to your good office and to your good committee, is, is the need to have the chamber of the House of National, uh, of, of the House, the National House of Traditional Leaders. It doesn't have a chamber, it means that it doesn't have a seat. So year by year, since 1997, we have been really borrowing and procuring uh, for sitting purposes. So I think I, 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 that issue needs to be resolved, Chairperson, because it, it, it can't be left alone. It can't be left hanging. It needs to be dealt with because this house is a very key component of the parliamentary precinct. It is a very key component of lawmaking exercises uh, in the country. And therefore you can't afford to have a house that is baseless, that is homeless. You need to have a house that is stable, a house that has uh, its own chamber, a house that is able to have efficiency and uh, critical capacity to be able to do its work of lawmaking, oversight, as well as representation. We, we are also saying as Contra Lesa Chairperson, uh, it is long overdue for the members of the National House to be made full time. We're making this point so that they can be dedicated to their work uh, in terms of lawmaking and in terms of rolling out programs that resonate with the institution of traditional leadership as well as rural uh, communities. You know, we see the chair and the deputy of the house as presiding officers, and therefore they are part and parcel of the parliamentary decorum. And what we want to see happening is that coupled with that is that when there are ceremonies at a national level, whether they are ceremonies of SONA and so on, they should be part of those processions because parliament is incomplete without the National House of Traditional Leaders. Certain laws will never be passed without the nod and the signature of the National House of Traditional Leaders. So it is, it is very important that the National House of Traditional Leaders is taken seriously uh, from that score. The same principle applies in provinces as well as the local houses. In so far as the traditional uh, authorities of our country, which are 882, we, they, they are also under resourced in terms of the tools of trade share. And we must make that point that uh, these are in the cold face of our villages and their governments. And therefore, if you are undersourcing them and uh, underfunding them, you are making them unable to do their function optimally with efficacy. So we say that those authorities must be empowered with resources. The only thing that we need are resources. Again, at that level, traditional leaders, you know, they make something out of nothing because they don't have that kind of support we need to ensure that this gets done. And um, I will also talk to the issue of the salaries of uh, senior traditional leaders as well as the headmen. It is something that we need to, to look at and ensure that uh, there is an improvement from that score. They need to be increased alongside 
other increments that are seen from public office bearers. Senior traditional leaders must be seen as such. They are public office bearers. And coupled with that, they do not have certain things which are very key for their livelihood, including uh, medical aid. I believe that a democratic state must make available resources to ensure that all traditional leaders are actually covered insofar as the medical aid is concerned. Traditional councils. We want all traditional councils of the country to be constituted uh, formally and uh, given a requisite uh, support. And uh, that, uh, that must also be linked to the compensation that must be afforded to the traditional councillors for the work that they do. Having said that, there is the lowest level of traditional leader called the subheadman that does the day-to-day -day work for localities in all the villages of the country. We need to make sure that uh, we also compensate them uh, with something, uh, whether it's a stipend or a salary, but it can be right that the people that do work on day-to-day level, they do that work for free and they've been doing it for years. And people who get um, established, you know, just 10 years ago, they get salaries, but people who have done this work time immemorial, they are not being uh, uh, remunerated. I think it is unfair to do so. The other point that we want to make, Chairperson, is that we need to expedite the recognition and the designation of the Khoisan community structures, in, including their leadership. This needs to be done, it's long overdue. Their process has started uh, way back in 1999 with a policy process, which now has culminated in the new amendment of the traditional leadership and, and, traditional, and Khoisan Leadership Act, which was promulgated into law recently. So we must not sit again for many years before this gets realized because it could be seen and it could be, it could be interpreted as a discrimination of a special type for them. These are Africans. These are part and parcel of the African majority. They themselves were the victims of coloniality. And uh, when Jan van Rupik and his fellows descendant in the Cape, they destroyed these structures that uh, belong to the Khoi and San people. They need to be revived. They are part and parcel of the South African history, culture, and heritage. Chairperson. The issue of rural infrastructure and investment in rural areas is very key and critical. We believe that there must be a focused attention to ensure that the roads, as well as uh, running water, is something that must be done as soon as possible for the rural communities. We can start off by ensuring that all the roads that are leading to the traditional councils are actually tarred as soon as possible. That will make it very easy for investment to come to our areas, in rural areas. It is very important that uh, we have a very good road network for rural communities because it creates all sorts of opportunities for our communities. And Chabasin, I must emphasize this point because like all other African states, South Africa is predominantly a rural country. And therefore, from a planning point of view, we must give attention to ensuring that we invest in the rural infrastructure because that pattern of us being predominantly a rural country will never change. Our ancestors are lying there. The spirit, our spiritual spaces are there. So there is no question that we will ever leave the rural spaces and they opt for urban spaces. We come to urban spaces, of course, they are part and parcel of our ownership in terms of them being the land parcels that belong to the custodians of land. But the point I'm making is that investment, it is not only an issue of urban spaces. There must be a way that we create a balance in terms of how we invest in the infrastructure. So the roads, are not in a good state in our country in, in, in the rural areas. And we don't need gravel roads, Chair. We need tar roads right there because that's where the African majority reside. And even yourselves, Chair, together with the members of parliament, 
when you are on recess, you descend back to your homes and you are confronted by roads that are dead roads, gravel roads. We need tar roads right there. Running water is something that we need to roll it out, share. Uh, some good work is already being done, but I think we need to up the speed. You know, Chair, in 1994, when we assumed the reins of power, the speed with which we embarked on the rapid electrification program in our country was excellent. And we could achieve the same results if we were to stay focused and ensure that when it comes to the road network, as well as running water, we do the same as we did with the rapid electrification program. Because these are basic needs, Chair. In this country, you still have people who go into the felt in order for them to relieve themselves. In this country, Chairperson, you still have people who wash by taking water from their feet right up into their faces, whilst others are having water falling from their heads into their toes. It can be, Chair. We need to change that. We must ensure that we've got running water across the length and the breadth of the country. Chairperson, when it comes to schools and clinic, the chairperson has told you that traditional leaders have been on the front line during the COVID period, in so far as ensuring that they communicate with government at local level, provincial level, and national level, and ensure that water is dispersed to our communities. But we could see that some trucks were just going straight to schools and clinics. We must make an understanding that schools and clinics are part and parcel of our communities. If there's no water in communities, then that's why you saw some people blocking those trucks. So the issue of water can be over communicated. It is very, very important that water is brought to communities. So by extension, um, public spaces like schools, clinics, and churches can also get the same. So it is very important as well that uh, we improve the lot in so far as our schools and clinics. They must be efficient as their counterparts are in urban spaces. We must not uh, create a dual system in this country. There should be one education system, and that means that the resources that are distributed to schools and clinics in rural areas equate the resources that are distributed in the urban spaces. Chair, we also want to say that we do need training for rural youth as well as rural women. We have structures like LG CETA and the National Skills Fund. They must strike a balance. Those resources are not only for local municipalities, they are also for traditional councils and traditional councillors, including women and youth in rural spaces. We must train them, we must equip them, we must ensure that their cooperatives are given the necessary support. So the chair of the National House spoke about the Department of Social Development and how they have come into the party critical well. We have a partnership with that department because it is also a very strategic department for our intents and purposes. So I cannot overemphasize the issue of training and skilling our, our youth as well as uh, rural, rural women, uh, uh, Chair. Lastly, Chair, I must make this point before I come to my very, very last point. Uh, we would like the revival of the, the academic centers, which used to be there to prepare the, the institution of traditional leadership for future responsibilities. There were schools that were designated for that responsibility. We would, want, we would want each province to have such a school to prepare traditional leadership for its role in the nation building in ensuring that uh, they are capacitated, they are given necessary knowledge, that they are acquainted to the constitution of the country and they are skilled so that they can have the right and requisite attributes for leadership. That's very key, Chair. If we don't prepare leadership, then our leaders will be found wanting. We must not set up the institution of traditional leadership for failure. The institution of traditional leadership, Chair, is very key in the management of the national question in South Africa. 
we are a republic that is very unique because we are a republic that has got kingdoms within itself. And we want to look at issues of how those kingdoms are supported in an equitable manner, Chair. We are a unitary state and we appreciate that. And therefore the kingdoms must be treated in a manner that is almost uniform and standardized. What the, 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 the province of Bozul Natal is doing a sterling job in the manner in which it gives support to its kingdom. I think we must set the pattern from there and extend to other provinces. People must stop criticizing the support that is being given to King Goodwill's Willitin. It's a good support. It's good for the country. It's good for the institution because that institution is an institution that is a custodian of what we are, our DNA as a people. All we need to do is to extend that to all other provinces. Now, Chair, let me come to the point that you made in your opening remarks that relates to the initiation, the traditional initiation. Ngoz Mashangu has indicated to you clearly that uh, we have taken a conscious decision uh, during uh, June, not only to suspend, but to cancel the traditional initiation season for winter. And we've done that, and we have been able to clinically ensure that all provinces comply. Our forces were on the ground to ensure that anyone who violates that decision will face the full might of the institution of traditional leadership and the law enforcement agencies of our country. Now, Chairperson, we are on alert level one of the lockdown and many things are happening. Our people have been disciplined and they have complied with the order that we had issued in June. Our view as Contra Lesa is that the traditional initiation season for this summer needs to be opened. We must never take decisions that will be difficult for us to implement, Chair. And we must not create civil disobedience on the part of our people. If other ceremonies are happening, let this one happen, but it must happen within the confines of what we have communicated. People must comply with social distances, mask, sanitize, all of those ABCs and XYZ must happen. We will communicate with our people that they must remain disciplined. Of course, I must say that we do not encourage our people to go into the summer initiation season en masse. But we're saying those that are hard pressed, that they feel critically for them, that they need to take their children to initiation, that we must open for them. Whilst we communicate a message that ideally we would like to roll the initiation season to the next following year of 2021. It will be difficult to prevent our people from doing so. So I'm saying that as long as we put guidelines and framework in place to ensure that we manage that exercise, and we again will take a front line as the institution of traditional leadership in ensuring that there's compliance with all the regulations. So chair, on that score, that's what we are putting forward as Contra Lesa, and we have communicated this to the Cocta Ministry and the department, all we want is for them to gazette our suggestions, which we have put forward. Chairperson, my parting shot would be that this is a very good exercise and we need to do it and we need to do it timelessly and we need to be communicated to timelessly. So I would appeal that at some point we would like to prepare an overarching presentation for your consumption, for your consideration, uh, so that you can have a better insight and better understanding wall to wall of what we are about. Contralesa is the motive force in this country insofar as the institution of traditional leadership. We are not in government as Contralesa, but we create policies which we then sponsor in order for the house to take them forward, in order for the government 
to take those policies forward and they are, they are taken on board as part and parcel of government policies of our country. Chairperson, again, on behalf of the National Executive Committee of Condralesa, as well as our PECs and BECs and RECs, we want to thank you for having given us this opportunity. We don't take it for granted. We really appreciate. And we're looking forward in this engagement becoming not only an annual exercise, but becoming a tradition in itself. Thank you so much, Chair. Okay, much appreciated. Um, General Secretary of Contraleza, we appreciate your input. They will put you on the tight corner, but I'm glad that you came in ready. Uh, Queen Como, can I just give you five minutes to say something? Representing the other community, please. Unmute your microphone. Your microphone is on mute, unmute it. It's muted, we can hear you. We can hear you, Queen. Your microphone is on mute. Your microphone is on mute. She has left. Okay, I think we need to allow members to interact with the presentations. She seems not to be hearing me. I'm seeing you, Honorable Oberman, to be the first. Who ne who's next? Uh, honor Honorable Chair, Honorable Chair, will be number two. Chair, I raise my on the facility. On the facility. Oh, yes, you are here. I've seen you. You are here. So it will be Oberman, Chloe, Mkalipi. On the facility, it's only you, Mkalipi. It's not any other one. Can we follow that order, Honorable Oberman? Yes. Thank you, Chairperson. I'd like to know regarding agrarian revolution, how far from implementation are your proposed five hectare food security project? And how does that link to the district development model? Why did you have to provide food parcels to traditionally vulnerable communities out of your own funds? What hem hampered government support and assistance? And how did MISA intervene during this period? There was also a non-payment of traditional council officers and staff. So what impact did this have on support to traditional leaders and what interventions did the minister undertook to address this challenge? You were also allocated 100 million for the farming input voucher scheme. How many beneficiaries benefited from this voucher as well as from the ones of 700 food voucher projects? And how has water shortages in rural villages impacted on your response to the pandemic? And what interventions were taken on the 17th of March this year when you met with the minister to address these challenges? And were these interventions implemented and was it curative? Thank you, Chairperson. Thank you, Honorable uh, Oberman. Honorable Do. Okay, thank you, Honorable Chairperson, members of the National House of the Traditional Leadership, uh, General Secretary and his team of the uh, Contralesa, and many other kings that are part of us. We welcome you. And National House of the Traditional Affairs, we welcome a progressive report and also the general from the Contralesa, otherwise we have islet with ministries that were really 
not uh, well advanced with it. But my question will be on, on I, I would also like to know about what. Sorry. My apologies. Proceed, Honorable Lord. Okay, I would like to know what has been the intervention of the National House regarding the controversial removal of the Provincial House Chairperson of the Eastern Cape. Then empower us on that issue. And also with regard to the work of the National House during the quarter under review, focus mainly on the responses to the COVID-19 pandemic. However, during the same period, the Department of cooperative governance embarked on a number of initiations relating to the district development model. Given the minister's view on the National House as a key partner in the implementation of the developmental district developmental model, why is the house work during the quarter and that it will not reflect, reflecting on the district developmental model work? Then uh, another question is with, uh, is with the issue regarding East Main Days to collect revenue to the traditional council. How much has the National House collected in, in this regard? How does the National House ensure that the revenue is subject to audit, considering that the traditional and question sun leadership act which provides for the auditing of the traditional council has not yet come into effect. And uh, okay, lastly... Okay, Mato. Okay, okay. Can we allow the other members? Honorable Kalipi. Thank you very much, Chairperson. Chairperson, last time when um, the department was here, we specifically ask about the disputes, especially in the Eastern Cape. Do you remember, especially about Abatembo issue? If uh, they can also elaborate on that fact, because it was a very interesting debate, because uh, there was a confusion in that regard. And we wanted to know, even now, that what has been the intervention of the National House regarding the controversial removal of the provincial house chairperson of the Eastern Cape. I'm asking this one, Chair, relates to Eastern Cape, but I want to also, if they respond, to respond in a nutshell to cover all areas in the, in the country. Because it's not only the Eastern Cape, but we get more information from other parts of the, of the country as well in terms of uh, the leadership at a provincial level but specifically with the issue of Eastern Cape because it, when we asked that time, it was just happened. And coming back to the presentation, Chairperson, uh, yeah, we, we appreciate the presentation from Mingosi Umasango and also the input that was made by the Secretary of Condoleezza. And the issues that the Secretary of Condoleezza, who is a, also an honorable member of parliament are very pertinent. <clears throat> And I think it needs to be processed and also to be attended to. You know, he, he also speak in terms of politics. He even said to you, Chair, uh, when we are in recess, we tend to go back to our uh, original place where we come from, which is true, and we need development. And I think it has been a concern for this committee, especially in terms of the budget. Um, even in Gosuma Omasango, also alluding to that fact. And, when we visited, uh, uh, I think it was KZN, uh, many concerns were raised, as Nkosuma Lang was also mentioning here, Guti. It seems as if we don't take them serious. And it, it's very sad when they are expected to, 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 to lead in this regard. They don't even have tools of trade. As I'm speaking to you, Chair, there are a lot of disputes that I also trying to get a sense of what is happening? I spoke. I spoke to the HOD. Oh, some of the issues, chair. I also, by mistake, put on the group of of us as as members of parliament. So, if those disputes uh, can be amounted and become very many, so I don't know how they are going to be able to deal with those disputes because uh, they become very toxic in a in a way that people they don't even understand the role of Amakosi and based on the on the resources which they don't have 
So if we can get the answers in terms of how to address this matter, because all the time when we want to get a report, especially the annual report, the issue of resources also comes out. Thank you very much, Chair. Mute chair, unmute yourself. My apologies. I wanted to follow up on this issue of the mechanism uh, that uh, the traditional leadership has at their disposal against traditional communities who fail to adhere with the COVID-19 uh, regulation. And then I've listened attentively to the General Secretary, our fellow colleague, Honorable Mukimba, on this matter of the initiation schools. And then he has outlined the process. But then, and then to say, it's not everybody, uh, like, they will deal with the numbers because the numbers still have to be dealt with. And then it's under stringent conditions. Uh, without wanting to and the department still has to say something on this matter. I think this is the matter that we are going to have serious interest on as, as we proceed. Then the other issue that one wanted to raise, it's with regard to the capacity of the house. Do you actually have the sufficient capacity to deal with the volume of bills referred to yourselves? And uh, what are the your recommendations to that effect. Earlier in the morning, uh, as we were dealing with the annual report of the, of the Department of Traditional Affairs, there was an issue that the deputy minister raised to say that there are 21 MOUs with other departments. And throughout the National House uh, uh, presentation, as I was listening to the chairperson, the department that I happened to hear being spoken about was social development and sports and arts and culture at some point. Then maybe the deputy minister must be able to tell us now that at this memorandum of understanding a life. And then I want to know in particular, out of these 21 MOUs, which department has come to party and which one hasn't come to the party and then uh, what mechanism do they have with regard to the enforcement of the this memorandum of understanding? It's just some piece of paper that goes to be put then whether it gets complied, implemented or not. It's up to, to that particular department whether to come to the party or not. I want to understand, you link it in line with the district development model. I know the other issue that the Queen is going to raise as and when she's going to be talking now is the issue around the factors informing the delays in the proclamation of the Traditional and Khoisan Leadership Act. In an earlier meeting, uh, Deputy Minister, he tried to explain, but it's a matter that one feels one needs to highlight here to say it can't be that Parliament uh, passes legislation early in 2019, if not late 2018. Now we are towards the end of uh, 2020. The bill has not yet uh, 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 been, be, has not yet come to force. The act has not yet come to force. And in so doing, it affects a lot of people, especially when there's no clear evidence of any other Court challenge to that effect, such that then uh, it's like parliament processes were not uh, were not uh, 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 complied with, and the reality is that there's no way that parliament will pass legislation without following all the the requirements that are prescribed on uh, making legislation. So those are the issues. Then I'll allow Honourable Hadewen to say something and then I'll allow the Queen to also comment on certain things that might need both the department and yourself, National House Chair and the, the House in particular, including Contralessor's response. Honorable Hadewe. 
Chairman, you also recognize my hand. Oh, Honorable Mbumza. Okay, it's fine. Honorable Kleser, welcome back. You want to end the record and Kleser. Where were you, colleagues? It's fine. Proceed. <laughs> Nana, thank you so much, Chair. We welcome both the report. I'll be very short. Uh, mine is uh, specifically directed uh, to Confralesa, and it's uh, informed by uh, his support towards uh, Isilo Samabandla, uh, or King Goodwill Zolitini. I'd like to get uh, their view and opinion on this much talked about issue of the Ingonyama Trust so that we, we, we share a perspective that is informed uh, uh, from uh, Amakosi uh, to just share with us uh, uh, whether or not they support given uh, uh, to that aspect or as others uh, uh, seek to insinuate in the media the anti uh, 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 support of the, the, the Ingonyama Trust. So if we can just get the views uh, of the leadership that will assist a great deal in formulating a way forward uh, in future for us in dealing with some of the aspects that are making headlines on the news. Thank you, Honorable Chair. Thank you, Honorable Hadem. Honorable Pumza. Uh, oops. Where are you today? Can we see you? Uh, thanks, Chair. I want you, I want you to see me. Yes. Yeah, we've seen the blink of you. Well, you see me now, Chair. But you've disappeared again. You're only seeing your oh. officials. Come to Th thank yes. you very much. Yes, stay thank there. you very much, Chairperson. Yes. Um, Chair, uh, in welcoming the report by Unko uh, Simatlangu, um, here in this report, uh, it's unfortunate that we are finding that uh, the capacitation of uh, traditional leadership councils uh, is a matter that is a, a, a bit overlooked in that uh, the report reflects that uh, the staff that is a uh, backup staff to traditional leadership councils uh, is not paid. And uh, maybe I wonder why should be this matter and these councils are expected uh, to function to optimal when they do not have a, um, paid backup staff. It's a matter of concern. The second matter, Chair, uh, is that uh, in the MOUs that we have also highlighted, we are finding that uh, the House is having MOUs with only one uh, uh, department, social development. Uh, maybe uh, the chair should uh, elaborate to us as to the nature of the MOU between the House and uh, the Department of uh, Agriculture, Land Reform and Agrarian and Development, and, 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 uh, and uh, Land Reform, in that, uh, uh, to what extent is this uh, MOU being uh, uh, that to traditional communities? to its problem of agri-parks as part of uh, rural development as a tool in gearing towards rural development in traditional communities. Uh, as well, again, what would like also to understand is uh, the extent that this solidarity funding and the other related fundings are they sufficient in actually resourcing uh, the agrarian revolution to massively turn around the socio-economic situation in the rural communities as part of a program that would be contributing 
to social cohesion and nation building in the traditional communities. And uh, how broad and intensive uh, is this program uh, in providing relief to vulnerable communities in the traditional communities? And how well resource is this particular gradient reform program so that communities are seized with this particular program in bettering their lives in the rural communities. Uh, thanks, Jay. I will come back later. Thank you, Honorable Mpumza. Can I allow Honorable Direko before I allow Queen Komo? Honorable Direko? Uh, uh, thank you, Chairperson. Uh, Chair, my question is on the presentation that has been made, uh, whereby uh, the traditional council offices, uh, traditional leaders indicated that they were continue to do to they continue to do the essential services during uh, uh, lockdown. However, their challenges was that uh, was non-payment of staff and that on its own created challenges. They also indicated that they, they were able to seek a intervention from the minister and the MEC. So I just wanna check how far are they in terms of the intervention? Was the situation resolved or is still the same? And then secondly, Chair, it's the issue of initiation schools. Uh, how do they ensure that the, the members of the communities where they are, they adhere to the uh, lockdown re regulations. I'm saying this because in my area, sometimes during uh, winter, while we're still at lockdown, there were some of the initiation schools which were taking place and the police has to had to be called in order to resolve the matter. But you can see that there are others who are still defying, who are still continuing with the initiation schools. So what can be used as a remedy to ensure that everyone adhere to the regulations of the lockdown? And then the, the, the last one, uh, Chair. Okay. And then on the last one, Chair, it's not part of the presentation, but uh, last year, in the, the middle of last year, I once visited Northwest where I met a chief, I think it was a chief uh, Motsipe. And then when I was speaking with the chief at that area, he indicated that there was an issue. In fact, there was a dispute on the kinship and the department of Cocta was working on that. However, the process was taking a very long time and at the end of the day was dividing the community because the, the community now was becoming part of the dispute. So I know that it is not only in Northwest where we are having that dispute over the kinship. It also happens in Free State and other areas. I just wanna check how far does the department take to resolve the matter? And to which extent do they make sure that when they resolve the matter, is the correct, uh, they are taking the right path? So that's my, my, my questions, uh, Chair. Thank you. Honorable Keza, welcome. I hope you are much better. No, thank you very much, Chair. Um, uh, I thought I was, I was going to say I'm covered. Uh, until you call my name. Um, I just wanted to commend the traditional leadership for the amount of work in pre-1994 and post-1994 in terms of uh, ensuring that uh, uh, people as much as they were confined into the 13% of the land did, were not tempted to <clears throat> build them cuckoos and as such uh, have them cuckoo mentality uh, uh, permeating uh, into, into that. That uh, people were, were allowed to build adequate housing. Uh, people were allowed to have space where the extended families could then be uh, housed properly and where we grew up and where we grew up 
very well with 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 the necessary values. And uh, I'm from a rural area myself, Chaperson. Uh, the question of water, when the general of secretary spoke of water, is very very. It's a. I was there in December, and there are some pictures that I I have sent in the group, uh, showing. The, the, the magnitude of the situation in Jefferson that uh, I do not understand. Uh, perhaps uh, the traditional leadership can then share with us as to uh, what wisdom do they possess, uh, uh, they can share with the municipalities uh, as, as people are, are, are really suffering in terms of uh, water allocation in, in rural areas, instead of uh, the committee being told that uh, time has said that uh, we are a dry, what, what, I don't know how do they say it, we are a, 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 a desert area uh, for, the, for lack of, of a better word, we, we, are, we are a dry area. So I, I just want to, to, to ask the traditional leadership, what can they do to assist these municipalities uh, not to uh, patronize our people whenever uh, they have to be answerable for, for, the, for the lack of water in, in those areas? Because I believe that uh, the seas can be turned, a uh, green revolution can be, can be, can be harnessed Many other uh, uh, creative measures can be done uh, to, to, to allow water to, to be available in those areas. But uh, over and above that, uh, uh, I also think that uh, the, the, the traditional leaders has maintained uh, the discipline in terms of, of, of people that uh, would, have, would have been tempted to to, to, to take the route of, of, of taking the law into their own hands within this time, within the period of COVID-19, in terms of uh, 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 um, uh, taking, uh, uh, taking uh, children to the initiation school. I just want to ask the traditional leadership as to do they have the measures in place to work together with the health department, because Chairperson, I've said this before here, yeah, but I feel that uh, it's, it's, it's going to carry much more weight when I'm talking to the traditional leadership. Uh, uh, someone uh, is going to have a better ear because uh, politicians tend to be arrogant. We know that very well, Chairperson. And uh, um, just on, on, on working together with um, uh, uh, health department because ideally one person is is one person uh, too many when you when you get to kill one person in South Africa as uh, uh, kills one person in South Africa for an example uh, he gets to to be he gets to to be to, to go to jail for his for 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 for, for his deeds. And I do not know uh, how many how many boys do then uh, who, are, who are passing uh, do the do the traditional leaders have the data that they have uh, in order to 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 hold those who are who are uh, 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 passing the boys because uh, you can't you can't have a situation where you have five boys who have passed and nobody is accountable. Uh, it, it's not done. Uh, uh, someone has to be held accountable uh, together with the Department of Health having to, to, to put measures in place to ensure that that does not happen, uh, that does not even get there uh, in terms of building capacity. Um, but I want to ask uh, uh, the, the, the traditional leadership on the on, on the relationship between them and the democratically elected councillors, uh, do they have a, a sound relationship in terms of the, 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 the allocation of these PPEs? Because 
we hear that uh, they had to fork some money out of their pockets and so forth. So today, is there is there any of any respect between between these two, and and how how can it be uh, mitigated, uh, Chairperson? And uh, um, and 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 lastly, Chairperson, just on 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 that. Uh, there are no facilities, Chairperson. It's, it's the same thing that we've said again. There are no facilities. Uh, there are no sports uh, and cultural activities. And I don't know if uh, the General Secretary can 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 explain uh, for us uh, in terms of the sporting facilities, even in those areas, because not only do this thing of soccer and sports come from the township, as we are uh, made to think. Many talents are coming from 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 the rural areas, and 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 they are often stifled by the by the narrative that that these sports came all these sports came from Europe, Jefferson. So <laughs> historically, so we can't we can't just say uh, we can't be regionalist about it. So so I just want to ask: Does does the Department of Arts and Culture get it? You know. Because sometimes I think that 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 department does not get it, you know, that 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 things like this have to be built, capacity has to be built, recreational capacity, uh, sporting facilities in those areas to ensure that, uh, uh, as much as the skills have to be have to be developed, uh, also there's there's allowance for. For, for 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 sporting facilities because I played rugby. We played rugby at uh, at a, at a school level. We ran. None of those things are are happening right now, and and that would speak to the the moral the moral fiber uh, in in even in rural areas. Uh, I I think that the the, the the kings and queens would uh, would, would would attest to that. Thank you, Chairperson. Thank you for all that. Thank you so much. Uh, Queen Como. Good evening, Kai Chief Chairperson, honorable members of the camp of the House, and all protocol observed. Can you hear me, Chairperson? Yes, you are audible. Proceed. I would like to thank the committee of the National House of Traditional Leaders tonight of the, for the hard work they have done in the past years. It's not unforeseen, we appreciate them highly. And with that saying, also for the TKL bill that, this is, that is appointed. Based on this outcomes of the report of this morning, we as the Queen Sand now want to know the timeline for the implementation of the bill. Hence, I'm saying we are ready for implementation and want to know and to ensure the committee that the Queen Sand is united is our, as, as in objectives to our united people. We, I also want to add, Chairperson, tonight, that the Khoi Khoi people, we weren't born in South Africa, but South Africa was born in us. But that saying, Kangans, thank you so much. Can we allow the Deputy Minister to respond before we release him, as he said he want to be released at night? Then the others would follow. Deputy Minister Mapela. Thank you. Chairperson, and uh, thanks for your indulgence that I had earlier indicated I wanted to leave early. Uh, I'll just respond on a few because there are quite comprehensive issues that will need the department to really develop a comprehensive response on all of them. Let me start with the TKLA, which you, you alluded to once more again, maybe for the audience. That is uh, welcoming, obviously, Nkosi Matlangu, the, the chair of the National House of Traditional Leaders, the deputy Mam Shawili, and all other traditional leaders accompanying from various houses in the provinces, and also the secretary general of Contralesa. 
uh, over Bumkiva, and then also the officials led by the DG here, to all honorable members. The TLB, as we said, has been signed into law. However, there's a clause that says the president will then determine the date in which it should be commencing. It was at a point when the president was in the process of signing the commencement date that there was a, 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 an indication or, or a letter that came in from the law firm that was representing some NGOs in South Africa that were opposing to certain sections of the law to be commenced. And the president then stopped the process of commencement and then allowed for the investigation of all the issues that were raised. And as you said, Chair, amongst others, uh, was the issue that parliament did not follow a thorough process of public participation. Uh, so consultations with parliament had to be done, the legal services of parliament to verify, to look for the minutes of all those public participation as a demonstration and evidence that there was a public participation process that took place and, uh, and quite a number of others. So last week only then, we were able then to get a comprehensive response from the, the law firm that was appointed by the, 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 the department. And uh, they have satisfied themselves that the president can proceed with the commencement date so that the law can be a law that we can start implementing. So the implementation therefore stopped because it's not yet a law until the commencement date is given by the president, even though it has been signed into law. But uh, as you said, Chair, that sometimes some of these uh, uh, NGOs will then cite things. Uh, they don't participate in the public participation sometimes, or they will then begin to undermine parliamentary processes and other processes deliberately to stall certain movement towards uniting South Africans and ensuring that everyone is included in the processes. But I think I've explained it enough. We're waiting for the commencement date to be signed so that the law can then be implemented. Department, I think the DG will come later, is ready with the, uh, for the establishment of the commission that will then begin to look at all the applications that will be invited to say, because there are so many people who are saying from the question, for example, that they are leaders, they are kings, they are queens, and then we'll then be determining them in terms of quantifying and and, and, and verifying and ensuring that indeed the right people are in the right place because some might be taking chances we do not know because there's thousands of them that are already queuing up to say they are the leaders. So it can only start at that time so that the question can then be, be part of the bigger family of the traditional leadership in South Africa. On the initiation season, Chair, I, 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 I think sentiments have been expressed. The only challenge is that uh, there are statements, unfortunately, uh, some of the statements are attributed and were set in public by the leadership of uh, uh, Contra Lesa, that uh, if government does not move on this matter, they will continue with initiation season without government permission. And I think it's, it's quite worrying that as leaders who could really go to an extent of expressing and uh, such statements on TV, on radio, are attributed to the organization controller. So we have been working very well during the consultation at the beginning of the, 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 the regulations, stage five, and then also during the middle of the, the regulations, I think it was on stage four or stage three, there was a meeting which was held with the traditional leaders in the houses and also with the president as a way of really consolidating these consultations. There is a pending meeting, obviously, that uh, the president was to initiate uh, with the minister of COGTA for further consultations around some of these issues. And I think we should uh, leave it open that this consultation are necessary. We ought to go through them. But I'm worried also that the more we do not consult, there's few weeks left, exams will be over, and, uh, and the fear is there, even within government, that if we do not then give uh, regulations, if we allow it, uh, we need to have stricter regulations 
so that we save the lives of our people from first COVID itself, but also from uh, uh, illegal initiations or wrong things that happens in initiations. I just hope therefore that this cooperation model that has started can continue. Otherwise then if we're just gonna uh, re release statements that are encouraging defiance, it's not gonna help us to really arrest the situation. Whilst I, I agree with the Secretary General that if we do nothing, there will be an open defiance without contra lesser or with contra lesser in, uh, uh, in it. So the sooner we do so, the better. But there are processes, Chair, that uh, the minister is engaged with the department, uh, with the Co Coronavirus Command Council to really begin to, to give a, 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 an adequate uh, regulations that can then govern. Most provinces have said that they will not uh, do initiation season except for the Eastern Cape. So Eastern Cape is the one that has indicated through the premier who has written a letter to the presidency. We are trying to trace the letter, uh, whether it was signed from Eastern Cape to the presidency, we do not know. However, we're not waiting for the initiative by the premier because the premier did raise the matter, the presidential uh, coordinating council. And, uh, and then we're we are giving it an attention. I hope therefore that in a few days to come, they will be able to then process the matter by end of next week and so that we will then take it to cabinet and then cabinet then uh, the minister to pronounce on the matter so that uh, we're able then to say whoever initiates, there will be stricter adherence to the COVID regulations. And unfortunately, they are going to be as severe and very strict. And those who initiate must then know that the honors will be on them. Whether you are a traditional leader, we are a leader of Lona, you said you want it, anything happening, children dying from COVID or incidents of during initiations happens, those people must take full responsibility, including the premiers that are asking for it. They will also have to then take the honors so that we know where to blame it, but also the there is an indication also that uh, if we are to allow it, uh, then the COVID regulations of six months uh, sentence without an option of a fine, a criminal record on some of them will arise. And therefore that's how, so that it's up to them whether they want to do it and if they do it, and I think it will be in that context. But we will then uh, wait for that process. The minister is still consulting and will be finalizing with the house and everybody and then those that says they want to do it, and then the regulations will be in place. Then the, on the other issues, there are certain bills that are still stuck in Parliament, the Cultural Initiation Bill itself, uh, which also proposes that anyone who runs an, an illegal initiation, the sentence will be five years. Just even if there's no incident, nothing has happened, those children are alive. For it, that it was done without permission, it will be there. So NCOP is finalizing it this week, Chair. I hope there will not be any fundamental differences. There will be provincial mandates that they are now looking at. And then, and then, and then tomorrow, they are, it is on the agenda. I just hope it goes well within the NCOP so that then it can then be sent to the president for, for ascension. And, and also the traditional court bill uh, was almost finalized, but uh, unfortunately we got the bad news today that some provinces are now withdrawing the support of the traditional court bill. And if not more than five provinces do not support, that bill collapses, elapses. And it has been in the parliamentary system for the past 15 years. Uh, and, 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 and I don't know, we just hope therefore that it's only that province that has withdrawn and whether it will be affecting the number of the provinces that support, then it means the bill will not have any endorsement and any support. So it's not, the department is not in control of the department. It is in control of the parliament because we have done our work, public processes were done well with the department consultation with the N, uh, NGOs that were opposing and wanting to take us to court. We're able to deal with all those issues. Now parliamentarians, now they are coming back to say they are not supporting it. Uh, and then on the, the number of the departments, that have MOUs, I think the DG will answer that one later. Uh, and, uh, 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 there were supposed to be 
this memorandum of understanding as their law dictates. However, quite a number of departments have not responded, uh, uh, Chairperson, and uh, there are few. I think if there are any, they are less than 10 out of 21. But the DG will be able to quantify the numbers. Then the other issue was the, on the issue of the, the, <clears throat> the, 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 the I think this, the, the resources of the department and the budget, definitely it needs a comprehensive review. And with the support of the portfolio committee uh, and also other voices, we still have to punch weight on this particular issue. The DG in the morning said, each time we submit better budget propose and proposals, we get defeated in the budget mean com budget. And then obviously there are priorities that the country says they are looking at these priorities. And unfortunately, this department has not been well supported, but the, the minister uh, has been saying this needs to be prioritized, including on the issues of tools of trade and all those things. But it will be a debate and a discussion that will then come back on it and, and give a full uh, uh, learner on it. So Chair, I think those are the issues that I just want. Oh, the last one was the issue of the, the King support is yes, the proposal of KZ and KZ and model is a fantastic model, but will it, it be afforded by the province? Is the KZ and that's doing it? It's not national. So in the in the Limpopo there are three kings. So if the budget of the king of the Zulus is 60 million rand, it means 60 times three, 60 million rand times three of the kings in 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 in, in Limpopo. In Eastern Cape, there are four kings. It's 60 million rand times four uh, for each of the kings. And there are three pending kingships that have applied. Amakhahabe, Abatembase Khode, they want their own kingdom too, away from the other Abatembu. And then also there's another group that says the Abatembu kingship does not belong to the Dalinjevo house, it belongs to another house. So we may end up with up to six or seven uh, kings in, in, in the Eastern Cape. And then if that be the case, 60 million rand times seven. So I think some of the issues that we are asking, we ought to then also begin to look at the resources of the current country in in totality, we don't say the, the kingships are not important. We don't say the traditional leadership is not important, but we need to balance our argument and our request so that it becomes a progression as the economy prosper and as more money is available, we'll be able then to engage. But the minister will be coming to you, uh, Chair, uh, with the proposals that we are engaging the MECs on, uh, and then also the MECs engaging with their provincial uh, MECs for finance on a model of a better budget for, for the king's support, minimum as to this and the standards that we are also proposing. But as to whether we'll reach 60 million, obviously those that is then is dependent on the resources that the country can afford. But the rest of the others, I think, will come back comprehensively, including those that you know, had raised in October to package them as the traditional leaders are speaking now. And then we'll then see what are we doing on some and which ones we have done well and then progress on them. And, and, and I think let, let me stop there and thank you. And I've been listening so well and there's, those issues are quite key and very important. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Deputy Minister. We can excuse you as long as the DG is still here and the Secretary of the House is still here as well. Then we can proceed on that note. Thank you can very I... much, President. Sure, sure, you are excused. Thank you. Can we then allow the DG to respond to the outstanding issues, DG traditional affairs? Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Chairperson of the Committee, uh, the uh, members, Honorable members of the Committee, and uh, uh, the Chairperson of the National House of Traditional Leaders, the uh, Deputy Chair. And uh, 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 the leadership of Contralesa uh, and all members of the of the National House uh, uh, that are here uh, with us with us today, 
Chair, I think just five issues to, uh, to touch on that I, I think they have not been uh, covered. Um, and I think the rest of them, I think uh, would, the, the Secretary of the House will also come in as, as members uh, wanted to know uh, the position of the House on, on, on these issues. Just to start on the issue uh, that was raised about traditional council uh, staff. Um, indeed, it is, it is true that this, this matter was raised uh, about uh, uh, the remuneration of traditional council staff. Um, what, what the minister did was to allow a platform uh, at a, an extended MINMEC meeting where uh, the, 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 the members of the house uh, and the, uh, the, uh, the chairperson's forum uh, could address uh, 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 extended MINMEC on this issue so that the MECs uh, could hear for themselves the concerns uh, that the institution of traditional leadership has on this area. So it, it was raised at that level uh, and, 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 and there was uh, an agreement that um, provinces would look into it. Uh, they would look at what they are able to provide, look at where the gaps are uh, and uh, then uh, uh, unfold processes where given the gaps that they'll have identified, uh, ensure that they engage with the relevant treasuries. So, so that, that's what was agreed and indeed provinces did write reports and indicate what they are able to cover and what they are not able to cover. Perhaps just to clarify that, that, that there are different models that are being used at the moment. So uh, one province would say we give a traditional council a grant um, and it is up to the traditional council then to see what it does with that grant. Uh, including the, the the employment of staff, uh, others would say we 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 are appoint, uh, and then the staff get seconded uh, to, to 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 the TCs. Uh, but ultimately, what what was raised in that meeting with the uh, extended minmeg was that uh, the levies that traditional councils uh, charge get used to appoint additional staff uh, that are then paid. Uh, by, by the traditional council to do other work uh, at, the, at the TC. And with the advent of COVID-19, they were not able to uh, raise that kind of income and therefore they were not able to, to pay the, uh, the, 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 the salaries. For our side, what, what we have done is we have taken this matter up, but broadly speaking on, on tools of trade uh, for the institution of traditional leadership. We've, uh, taking it to the budget forum meeting, uh, which is a meeting where you have the Minister of Finance, uh, the Minister of COCTA, and provincial counterparts uh, in that meeting. And the agreement there was that um, it should be referred to a technical team uh, that would look into the details, uh, consult much, much more widely about it, and then come back to, to the budget forum. At the technical level, we have done, uh, we've started with a consultation uh, what National Treasury has said was that we should expand this consultation so that it's not just between us, National Treasury and provincial COCTAS, but it should include provincial treasuries as well. Um, and, and, and National Treasury said they will assist with that process to bring the provincial treasuries on board. Um, and in addition to that, they'll also assist with the process of analysis of the budgets uh, or, uh, uh, that, that provincial treasuries themselves handle. So that by the time we go back to the budget forum, uh, we have a much more informed analysis uh, of what the constraints are, what can be done, uh, and, and, and so on. on. On the issue of uh, that was raised by the Honorable Mkiva on the budgets, on the salaries of subhead men uh, and, and head women, at the moment, um, the provision for uh, salaries that has been determined by the uh, Remuneration Commission uh, is for the four categories that are contained in the act. So it will be for kings and queens, one. It will be for principal traditional leaders, two. It will be for senior traditional leaders, three. And finally, it will be for uh, headmen and headwomen. So there isn't a level below headmen, headwomen that is provided for both in legislation, uh, but also in terms of the, 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 the recommendations of the remuneration commission. But, but what, what the remuneration commission has said in, in in, in, in one of the last meetings they had with the minister was that they, they, they are embarking on a comprehensive review uh, on the salaries and benefits of the institution of traditional leadership. Uh, and they will uh, come out of that with a, 
uh, with recommendations that will then have to be considered uh, uh, eventually for, for approval by, by, by the president. But there isn't provision for that uh, at the moment, uh, because even in terms of legislation itself, uh, we have only those, uh, those, those, those four categories. Honorable Mkiva has raised the issue of a chamber as well for, for the National House of Traditional Leaders. This, this, is, this is a matter that has been raised before. And, uh, it, it has not been processed because uh, of obvious constraints um, of finances uh, that will then need resources to make sure that we make provision for infrastructure. Um, but, but it's certainly a matter that is on the table that has been brought to our attention. And the, the, the reason that it has not moved uh, it's, it's, it's purely on the basis of, 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 of lack of, of resources. Then the, the, there is also uh, an issue that was raised by Honorable Mukiva on the appointment of members of the National House on a, on a, on a full-time basis. Uh, also, that matter has been raised, in fact, much more recently. Uh, the chairperson of the National House, Kos Maslangu, has written to the minister uh, on, on this matter. Uh, the, the minister has assigned it to a team that will look at uh, the implications of that. Obviously, it would mean that there will be an increase in the compensation of employees' budget for, 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 for the department. Um, and how do we then, if that's the way that we're going to go, uh, how do we deal with the practicalities of uh, the, uh, that increase uh, in the compensation of employees' budget of the Department of, of Traditional Affairs at a time when uh, the ceiling itself is such that it's, it's, it's not possible to, to make additional appointments. But, but the, 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 the expectation is that the, the, the technical team will then come up with the comprehensive reports, having explored all the options uh, on this matter, uh, so that the minister then um, uh, is able to, uh, to, to have a discussion with the, uh, with the leadership of the National House uh, of, of Traditional Leaders. The issue of, 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 of TKLA, the DM has dealt with it, as well as the issue of customer initiation. Perhaps just to end off on the one on, on MOUs, um, in, indeed, there are a number of MOUs uh, that, that the department and the house uh, have worked on. Uh, they, they, there is an MOU with, uh, with, with us and culture, uh, uh, for example. Um, there is um, an MOU. Others are not MOUs with government departments, but MOUs with other entities, uh, for, uh, for, for example. So, for example, at the moment, we have an agreement with, uh, um, with, uh, uh, with LG CETA. Uh, but that is also to assist us on uh, the induction of newly constituted traditional councils once the TKLA uh, comes into existence. And, and that is a, that's a, that's a document that is, uh, uh, that, is, um, uh, that is active at the moment. We continue to have uh, updates with LG CETA on how far uh, the process uh, of, 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 of TKLA coming into, into effect is. Um, the, the other work that they have been doing uh, with us in this in this area um, has been uh, also just just uh, on um, some of the, the the preparatory work on the creation of a possible uh, program management structure that will oversee the process of of supporting what happens in provinces when we get to that stage uh, of the rollout uh, of of the reconstitution process uh, um, yeah, of, of, tra of traditional councils. But I think overall, what has been the weakness, especially when it comes to MOUs with departments, uh, is, is that there has not been much firmer mechanisms for, uh, for enforcement. That's why what we have done, and, and I think it's linked to the point that uh, Honorable Deputy Minister was making, it's, it's linked to what Section 20 of the, uh, of the Framework Act uh, says, uh, because Section 20 of the Framework Act says, a national government or provincial government may, through legislative or other measures, provide a role for traditional councils or traditional leaders in respect of, then it lists a number of areas, as in culture, uh, agriculture, land administration, health, welfare, and so on and so on. So the approach that we are taking at the moment is uh, because this matter has been raised a number of times with sector departments, and, and we are not satisfied with the progress that is being made we then decided what we should do is take a chunk of areas as per section 220 of the, of the, of the Framework Act, uh, take a chunk of areas annually and say, let's take health, for example, because the act says that national government or provincial government shall make uh, through legislative or other measures, 
provide for a role for traditional councils and traditional leaders in respect of health. So let's take health and work with the Department of Health to practically um, look at ways through that department could, through legislative or other measures, uh, provide a role for traditional councils or traditional leaders. Uh, once we have done that, then in the same way, then we look at, at, at others. There is tourism, uh, there is uh, the registration of births and deaths, which is where uh, Department of Home Affairs comes in, so that we, you, you then begin to be more practical by taking the areas that are reflected uh, in, the, in the act themselves, in the act itself, and work closely with the consent department uh, to put more flesh uh, in, in terms of the actual role that the, uh, the institution of traditional leadership the leadership can play. So that, that is the approach that, uh, uh, that we are taking at the moment. Um, I think these are, these are the issues that I just wanted to add, uh, Chairperson. I think the others, uh, the, the Secretary of the House uh, or whoever the Chairperson assigns uh, can, 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 can come in to, to provide input. Thanks, Chairperson. Okay. Can we move to the National House? Uh, uh, thank, thank, thank you, Chair. I'm not sure if we should also uh, allow maybe some of the members of yes. the House to yes. input before I come in, Chair. Yes, you can do that. That's why we invited them. We want them to participate in this meeting too. All right. No, thank you, Chair. I'll, I'll, I'll wait uh, for them to start participating. Maybe to assist you, they can show their faces or raise their hand, then I'll know them. Because you can also see them. Yes, then, Chair. Who wants to respond? I see Princess Morocco. She wants to speak in the platform thus far. It's Princess Morocco. Can I give you the platform, Princess Morocco? Thank you very much, uh, Chair. Kise Koto, who do Hosi Zotle Zahaito. Um, Chair, firstly, to appreciate um, this meeting, we, which is uh, very necessary, and also to appreciate the fact that beyond our previous meeting, we are actually uh, continuing. There's a, there's a form of continuation, which I think is progress in, in what we are trying to achieve in building the, the sector of traditional leadership. I would like to... Uh, bring to the fore the work that we are doing as a sector as well. I think the general issue here is that we, it's a fact that we are a generally um, not resourced institution. And we have been trying through programs like the Agrarian Revolution, and we, I think we are not mentioning the, the invest rural um, concept that we are working on as a sector, which would touch on all the pillars that we are talking about. Uh, basically, it is investing in igniting the rural economy. And this will sort of bring relief, I believe, to, to the challenge of resourcing, resourcing the, the institution. Um, I, I, I think once we, were, we are ready, and I think the chairperson of the National House will confirm this, um, we will have to present um, the, this invest rural concept to the, the portfolio community as well. Um, because then it, it addresses everything, health, education, um, sports, um, housing, water and sanitation. So it's a, blank, a, a holistic approach to the development of our sector. Um, I just thought we should bring that to light as well. Thank you very much, Chair. Thank you, Princess Morocco. Nkosi Ndumi Nobongo will be followed by Nkosi Kasi Nklauli. Yes, that order. 
Thank you, Honorable Chairperson of the PC. I greet all of my course. Uh, I, I think I've listened to both the, the, the presentations made by the Honorable Chairperson of the House, as well as Contra Lesa and the responses thereof. But before I make any comments, I just want to state that uh, I've done a research <clears throat> And the research that I've conducted uh, from the World Bank data org shows that in Africa, we are a, a mostly rural uh, community. Then, but I will, I will focus more in, in South Africa. The data shows that we are standing at 33.14% uh, as rural communities. The number, that is the data for 2019. I'm not sure of the data for, for 2020, but it shows that the, 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 the rural communities are made out of 19 million, 408,558. It therefore brings a, to, to uh, it, it therefore shows that even if at some point as South Africa, we had thought that rural communities are going to phase out the chances are very slim. And the chances being very slim, the, 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 the people who are leading that nine, those 19 million, 408,558 are royal leaders. I then went further to conduct another research which shows that uh, South Africa uh, has been ranked as the sixth drunkest country in the world. We are topping, we are, we are just one, two, three, four, five, six by the World Health Organization. I'm bringing these two to show that something somewhere has definitely gone wrong. One, uh, in terms of the rural communities, if you look at the, the, the manner in which a service delivery uh, is, uh, is being handled in rural communities, without a uh, blinking an eye, it's very saddening. Rural communities have been forgotten. It's very, very saddening. That has been shown by COVID-19. It has laid bare the challenges of rural communities. The issue of water tops it all. It, we were told that in order to keep uh, COVID, we have to wash our hands uh, thoroughly, we have to uh, and uh, and uh, I mean, more than once, more than twice, each and every time you do a percent, you wash your hands, and there was no water to do that. And if you go to my to my neighbor uh, in, in, in a town, three hundred kilometers away from me, there are swimming pools full of water. You 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 get to a point where you feel like. Even if they can share the water that they are using uh, for their swimming pools, that would make such a huge difference in us as rural communities. And then you, you, you get to a point of asking yourself as to what is it that we should do as rural leaders in order to, to, to change the lives of our communities. We don't have resources, that's a fact. We are dependent uh, to, to, to government in order to bring, uh, to, to assist uh, God's people that are being led by our, by our area, by, 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 by that, are being, by, that are being led by us in our rural communities. And we have to ask ourselves, statistically, what is it that has been done in rural communities vis-a-vis -vis the urban areas? I'll just cite one example, one. Uh, the Department of Human Settlement is providing 165 for people to purchase houses in rural areas. It's for somebody go get a house. If it's below, if it's, it's if it's below, if it's 160 and below, then you are not getting any amount of money. The, the, for, for the government to pay that attorney, you have to register the house at this office. Numerous transactions have been concluded. But now, if you look at that statistically, vis-a-vis -vis the people from rural areas, it's also very glaring that it, it doesn't tally. So the, I'm just pointing these few, exam, these few examples just to, just to show the, 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 the gap
between an urban area, a person in urban area and a person in rural, in, in rural area. We, we cannot run away from the fact that COVID has also shown the gap that has been, that, 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 that is being reflected in, in, in as far as 4IR is concerned. Children from urban areas, they are ready to sit for exams as we speak. They are writing exams. Children from rural communities are found wanting because we, they, they, we don't have the facilities like the Wi-Fi, there's no fiber, there's nothing. Uh, they, are, they, they, they have to move from urban area, from rural areas to go and, and reside in urban areas in order to catch up because there is no facility uh, that, 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 that has been created in order to close that gap. So the point that I'm driving home is to show that people from rural areas are really, it's a very sickening state of affairs. They are really suffering. And those are the people that belong to the very same South Africa. So it therefore tells us that as, 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 as real leaders, we, 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 there's no other room or there's no other way that we can address this except to talk these issues uh, with our government and to show uh, the glaring picture of the differences between uh, uh, South, Afri South, South African communities. And now linking this statement with, the, with, the, with, the sixth, uh, with South Africa being ranked as number six uh, of the, of, in the world of the country that has got more people drinking because they don't have anything to do. Lack, the, the lack of entertainment, uh, I mean, so, so entertainment resources in area, in the recreation, uh, rec uh, re recreational resources in rural communities, then they tend to go to taverns. We we can we be assisted, uh, Minister? Uh, sorry, a uh, chairperson, because this is your portfolio, as to close the gap of, of people in rural areas and the gap of the people in urban areas, because it's so glaring. Coming to the issue of, a, of, 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 of a agriculture, there is so much vast land, but we, we, we are the main importer, importers of food. We get food from outside, yet we've got so much land. How many tractors are being provided in Amakom Kulu, so that the, the, uh, the people in rural communities are able to plow. How many boreholes have been uh, as in the way in, in, in our rural communities, so that people are able to sprinkle uh, 365 is a year. We, we've been found wanting by, by, by COVID coupled with, with lack of ugutia. If this was this gap was closed off, ensuring that Abantu Emakaya Baya Lima, at least many of face and the issue of uh, the issue of COVID-19 and not the issue of, of poverty. So uh, this is a plea uh, uh, that uh, with, the, with, with, your, with, with your committee, at least can you crack the whip in, in the especially the department of Cogda, because there's a CWP program. The Mrs. Faith, the four billion that is spent power CWP, the value for that man, EP. If the Ganda in those rural communities, then Azulimabantu Payan, if corn into something somewhere has gone completely wrong, in it in Domana, let us be comfortable to discuss, even if some people feel it's uncomfortable. But can the request that I'm making in Dogobana, can you just crack a whip to ensure in Dogobana people in rural communities get a flock in urban areas? Because even the urban areas, they do have a problem of providing. For for shelters for these people, they don't have that the, the, the capacity to do that. Water providing water and sanitation, it, it becomes a challenge even to them. And if if the gap in rural communities was being closed by uh, by ensuring that there are resources, because they would have something to do in rural areas. So it's a plea. Uh, Thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much. It's like you were in a meeting earlier. I raised this issue of the CWP program. And then I should think 
I should also then extend an invitation to all of you. The department will be briefing us on this program on the 27th. Time permitting, as a critical stakeholder, I would love all of you to join us and then we'll give you the right to participate as and when the department and the minister will be here to brief us. It will be good to have you in that meeting. Uh, can I allow the deputy chairperson to say something as well? Jose Hasiboni, I saw you zooming your picture. You want to say something as well? Yes, Deputy Chairperson. Uh, thank you, uh, Chairperson, uh, members of the Portfolio Committee, Chairperson Mkose Mashlangu, uh, members of the National House of Traditional Leaders, uh, Chairpersons of Provincial Houses, the leadership of Conralesa, uh, and everyone who's uh, watching uh, Emma Kai. Uh, Chair, I will just start by saying we have declared uh, the royal uh, uh, houses as developmental monarchs. Because we have noticed that if we don't do that for our communities, communities will suffer. After declaring that, that we are development and developmental monarchs, it is whereby those who regard us as such will come to us and join us, making us to, to achieve what we have agreed, we have decided to do. There was a, a, an issue which was raised by members talking about how are we uh, going to assist on the issue of water. And Gosunopong has already said something about the boreholes. But we also uh, suggest that the cleaning of dams in our rural areas needs to be considered. Because when it is raining, the dams were full of mud, the water, the water will just disappear. Also, Chair, if we can try and uh, look at for those who don't have the water tanks, the needy, just buy small water tanks for them for water harvesting. Because we know that there's no water in, in, in our dams, but if we can uh, harvest water, but prioritizing those who don't have water, water tanks. The, uh, the issue of the, uh, the district model, the district developmental model, we, you know that we have raised the issue that we are not clear about it. Uh, traditional leaders. So we may not be uh, implementing our programs according to what we don't know. But what we know, Chair, is that all our communities, rural communities are suffering. Mm -hmm. That uh, takes me to the question, Chair, which was asked about taking out money out of our pockets. As we were watching, Chair, waiting for a uh, support from the, from, from the government. And the support was not coming to everybody. As we know that some of the, of the man which are supposed to support the, our communities were, was used by those who were, not support, who were supposed to take it to the communities. Instead of waiting, we had to take money out of our pockets. As we know that we are also custodians of culture and customs that talks to Ubuntu, issues of sharing. You can't have something whereas Makela Nwako Ulalengatlang. So that's why we had to, to take out of our pockets some money to support our community. We can't wait for Umaspala um, um, because Umaspala sometimes Uzo uh, Ufuna e beneficiaries as it said. On the issue of uh, e, e food vouchers, Chair, when we are talking about this uh, uh, with Solidarity Fund, we said as traditional leaders, we don't support independence syndrome. That's why we said, yes, we can have short term, medium, and long term when talking about assistance 
and support it to the communities. We identify food parcels as short term. We also have talked about this, uh, the, the, the seeds, looking forward to the long term. As we know that solidarity fund won't be there for, for a long time, but we're just starting so that we can get partnership with uh, U, U, U rural development and agriculture and other uh, partners that will take uh, that, uh, uh, that, uh, that agrarian revolution forward. So uh, we, 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 we are looking forward to get more, 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 more support because uh, we can't say, we can't be just folding hands as, as, as traditional leaders. And COVID uh, has lent us mm -hmm. a lot that we need one another. And also the issue of a, a, a relationship between the councillors and Amakos. We have been talking about it, but it will depend uh, on different areas. But because in some areas, we find that uh, there, there is good relation. In some areas, there is, uh, there is not, uh, they are, we are not working together, but we are looking forward to that. And as, as I've had some of the provinces, they usually have, hold meetings with SALGA, dealing with those issues. As also at, at MINMEC, uh, COCTA MINMEC, we also discuss about those, all those issues uh, with SALGA. Uh, I think, Chair, uh, some of the issues were, 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 were responded to by uh, Amakos. But the other uh, issue Chair, is about uh, to avoid this uh, uprising, whatever is happening, burning of the roads and, and, and these uh, and, uh, buildings. Reporting back Chair, by the councillors is very key. Also working together. Uh, in fact, in their structures, inviting Amakos, also sharing their frustration so that we will be able to, to understand and talk to our communities. Because when they have promised something to the particular community, when that cannot be achieved, if they can come back to, the, to Amakos and say, no, we are unable to achieve this one, the, yes, the reason we can go, we, we are able to talk to our communities. But if you, they don't come back to us and report on on what on, on why they, 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 these uh, uh, promises are not achieved, we may, we may not be able to assist. Thank you very much, Chair. To Gondrales. Yeah, well, comrade. Yes, you have been challenged by the deputy minister. And Honorable Director has raised serious issue in this initiation project. Yes, you need to respond yes. to those issues. Yes. I'm not sure whether, <clears throat> but let me respond. And uh, I, I, I would also, in the same spirit as the uh, Gosmashlang was indicated that uh, those uh, of us who are also represented in this platform, maybe they would want to say something and I wouldn't want to take maybe all the time to me. myself, but- You can help um, me first before you, who want to talk from Contra Lesser side? Can we get that? There's no one saying they want to talk. Okay. Yeah, then it means you will represent them. But I see the picture of Inkos Nokonyan. You wanted to say something, the last A2 call. Yes, let sir. Me allow, let me allow you first. Oh, so thank you so much, can. Chair. Yes. Can I be heard? You can be heard. If you can also show your face, it's going to be lovely. We haven't seen you <laughs> in ages. Okay, let me try. There you go. Uh, uh, can I be seen? Yes. You can see me now? Yes, we can see you. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, and uh, I greet you to all in the interest of time. Well, uh, uh, Chair, uh, it is a pity. Uh, that the deputy minister has left. Mm. 
As the Congress of Traditional Leaders of South Africa, we are really, really concerned. And in fact, uh, the people, particularly the General Secretary, uh, has been mandated to speak on our behalf. And uh, what we see in respect of uh, the initiation, for instance, uh, is that uh, uh, for many, many years, uh, the initiation of boys to manhood in terms of tradition, we don't get the support from our government. And uh, as far back, I know, I think Kosindi will be able to attest to this. Some 20 million was actually set aside. What for? For the, uh, the, 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 the national medical uh, circumcision. That's the, pro the problem we have. Coming to this point, in the Eastern Cape, we do have an act number five of 2016 that regulate the initiation. And in terms of that, the departments uh, do form a, a, a structure that reports to the Provincial Initiation Coordinating Committee that is chaired by the chair of the House of Traditional Leaders. And the reason underlying that is because all those departments must actually channel some money towards the initiation. What we have done, as my leaders both have said, uh, we, we had to be very responsible to say people must not undergo initiation during winter season for obvious reasons that we all know. And, um, but what has, actually has, has happened, the budget uh, of the department, particularly of the House of Traditional, has been less by 70% in the Eastern Cape. And up until now, we don't know how much budget has been provided for. Since we gave an signal that it is necessary for, for, for our people to undergo initiation. And uh, we see therefore that there is no political will uh, somewhere because of this competition between us uh, traditionalists and those that are actually promoting uh, circumcision uh, in the hospitals. That's one point. The other point, on the question of the of of of, of councillors, again, there, I think the honourable members must understand. Uh, we have been engaging our government for ages since 2000, and uh, and uh, the, the, the 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 DG knows that uh, after the controversial Khalima Motlante uh, branded us as ten point dictators, and uh, we engaged the government again. Uh, this present administration, and we agreed then that the, the agreement that was implemented uh, agreed as far as 2000 that the constitution must be amended so that we have got powers and functions. At present, we don't have powers and functions. In fact, uh, I hear my colleagues telling about uh, uh, some uh, subheadmen and everybody not getting anything, but to, to add to what they have said is that uh, ward councillors, they've got ward committees. Guess what? You all know members of parliament, they get money, but our people, they don't get anything, yet they are working 24 hours. That is unfair discrimination. We have taken a decision, uh, the National House as well as Contralesa, to take the government back to court. And uh, we shudder because next year is the local government election, and this government is going to, pre to, 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 to depend on us. What has happened? In 2016, the term of traditional councils, 60% that are democratically elected, ended. And we agreed with the government that no, after uh, they, they, we must prioritize local government in 2016, guess what? Until now, the government has not actually provided us with money so that the traditional council can be re-elected. How can we have partnership when we are treated unfairly like this? Hence, traditional leaders in the country have said, no, uh, we must take this government to court. And, uh, and uh, I don't think that there's any basis for cooperation. And uh, hence, again, uh, I know you have apologized. We are, it's no surprise some of us that we are, we are actually thought about, we are invited uh, during midday. How can uh, we think that we are really treated uh, as such? My colleagues in the province have said, no, we must not participate. But we felt that, no, we must participate and make this point, which our general secretary have done. I hope, therefore, uh, Chair, uh, I must not take all, everything 
but to respond only to, 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 to those issues, to make sure that uh, really uh, we feel as traditional leaders that we're not taken seriously by our own government. Yes. Yes, yes, it has been handed over to you. <laughs> Yeah, when traditional leaders come to the space, they take over the power because power belongs to us. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, very quickly, Chair, because I think we have, we have went beyond the time that was allocated for this meeting, but I wouldn't want to leave here not having answered the questions which have been raised by the members. Let mm -hmm. me start off by the question raised by the Honorable Lerato Cho in relation to the removal of the house chair in the province. Indeed, in the middle of the time when the lockdown was still between level two and level three, Ngosunongo Nyane in his capacity as the chairman of the house in that province was removed by the MEC. Then the president of Contralesa appealed to the premier of that province uh, to ensure that uh, is reinstated. We're saying that we can't in the middle of a war against an invisible enemy. We are in the business of removing leaders. And for that matter, we felt that he was being removed in an irregular and an unprocedural manner because Ngosnongonyane is an elected chair of that house of traditional leaders. And therefore the executive can't have an overreach and go and just remove him through a letter. Uh, there had to be due processes. <clears throat> so he was indeed reinstated. But unfortunately, uh, a month or two later, the, the House members uh, then uh, put forward uh, a vote of no confidence, which led to, again, a second removal. So that matter is still in court, because Nongonyane is challenging it, because he, he, he is of the view that uh, he was removed unfairly. Well, as Contra Lesa, we, we support him because he is part of the National Executive Committee of Contra Lesa, but he's also the chairman of Contra Lesa in that province. And our principle is that uh, we must encourage that the chair of Contra Lesa in a province should also be the chair of the house to ensure the harmonious uh, you know, leadership uh, of the two uh, institutions. Let me move to the issue of the district developmental model, which was also raised by the same honorable member, Tro. Uh, yes, of course, we would like to, to get closer to this and get to understand it. As Condra Lessa, it has not yet been presented to us, but we do understand it from a distance as to what it seeks to do uh, in terms of the literature that we have come across. But we think that, Chairperson, it would be great if you can come and present this to us. Otherwise, we do support it because we can see the intention is good uh, of what it is intended. It is to bring government closer to the people and ensure that we all put our hands together on the dock and ensure that we take the service delivery to the people. On the issue of um, Abate Royal House, which is a question that was raised by the Honorable Shengwem Kalipi, uh, well, that matter, we think that it has now been settled because the king has been reinstated by uh, back to his position. That is King Zuelibansi, uh, Bielekaya Dalinjevo. He's back into his position. And uh, we haven't had anything recently uh, because he is the rightful heir for that particular position. So we felt that the government did a right thing by reinstating it and Contralesa supports his reinstatement. Of course, Chair, you also spoke about your concerns about this issue of initiation, but I want to come back to that at the end. Let me deal with other questions so that I deal with that question together with the questions from the Honorable Tigeleti Tireko as well as the, the other people who spoke to that matter. On the issue of Ingonyama Trust, uh, <clears throat> raised by the Honorable Peggy Hadebe. Contralesa is of the view that the land under the jurisdiction of Ingonyama Trust is the land in the hands of the African majority. It is land that is, is not part and parcel of the stolen land, if I may put it that way. And therefore our view is that that land is not 
uh, an issue when it comes to expropriation uh, of land without compensation. It, it does not fall in that category. We are therefore in support of the king that uh, together with his people, they should have the absolute custodianship of that land. And in fact, if there are other lands that they want to claim, when they do so, they will form part and parcel of that particular trust. I think the issue about Zingwanyama Trust, why other people are opposed to it, is the manner in which uh, that regime was established on the eve of the 1994 election. I don't think people should be looking at that. They should actually be looking at the land parcel itself and the fact that it is under the stewardship of a key component of the African majority in the form of uh, the Zulu kingdom under the stewardship of his majesty. So, um, now, <clears throat> the Honorable GG in Punza uh, has raised the issue of rural development and uh, green parks and so on and so forth. Our view as Contralesa is that we have put a proposal to government that uh, let the Department of Traditional Affairs be combined with the Department of Rural Development. It makes sense to do that because traditional affairs is a function that is located in rural communities. Rural development is there to serve and service rural communities. It goes without saying that these departments should be combined. And when we do that, it will make it easy for us to ensure that there is budget in place because rural development has got a lot of money that is there. And we find that that money gets rolled over because that department working in isolation from the Department of Traditional Affairs makes it impossible for them to achieve their objectives and targets. So we are making a point that uh, those departments need to be combined. And we have communicated that to the president. The president has heard us and uh, he was actually convinced by our argument. And uh, he was in the presence of the deputy president of the country when we said that. So it's a matter that is an ongoing engagement. And we hope that when the state is reconfigured, that matter will be taken uh, to its logical conclusion and be implemented. We hope so. Um, <clears throat> now, the issue of disputes, of course, there are disputes in all provinces, but we have a way of dealing with disputes, and we always encourage that uh, families that are involved in these disputes, they must engage and engage and, and ensure that uh, they engage until they find each other and get into a consensus, especially when it comes to succession. It is uh, not encouraged by Contralesa that our matters should be resolved by courts which employ English and uh, Roman Dutch laws. We need to ensure that we employ the wisdom of our own cultural heritage and, and African laws when we resolve our matters. So we, we, we really encourage that people should not rush and go to courts, but rather people must uh, engage and engage and continue to engage until they find each other. Now, <clears throat> the Honorable Kanya Teza has raised the issues of water. We think that water, yes, indeed, is a challenge in the country, but I think that as soon as uh, Chapesin, we invest in desalination, make use of the ocean water or seawater, and invest on an infrastructure where we pull that water into the inland, uh, lay down pipelines, and ensure that we create facilities now when it's not late because it's still affordable for us to do that. But if we postpone it to 10 years, it will be more expensive. I think the sooner we put resources in place and ensure that we invest in desalination of the seawater, uh, the better Jefferson. Number two, we are of the view that uh, boreholes or windmills must be revived and must be serviced or must be refurbished. And where, the, where other communities do not have some, we should put in new boreholes. 
in all rural areas as an alternative water uh, harvesting mechanism. We believe that there's a lot of water in the underground in our country that we have not explored. And unless we make a critical investment in that, uh, then we will not uh, find a solution. So I think we need to invest in the water infrastructure and have alternatives. Um, now, Chairperson, we do also support the idea of the sports facilities and recreational centers in rural areas. We believe that the Department of Arts and Culture needs to come to the party and ensure that each and every traditional council area has got these facilities. And actually the scope of sporting codes must be extended beyond netball, athletics, and soccer. We must introduce cricket, we must introduce rugby, we must introduce uh, golf, we must introduce all of these things, including uh, uh, cinemas and theaters and art centers in rural areas so that those that are talented in terms of uh, arts, culture and heritage practitioners have also a platform to tantalize their gifts and talents. Um, Chairperson, the Honorable Obed Mapela spoke about the unfortunate statements that were made by Controlesa. Well, I, do, I, I think that we were misunderstood or misrepresented. Uh, Contralesa was part of the defiance campaign in the struggle for the liberation of this country. We can't now defy a government of the people by the people. This government has been elected by the masses of our people and at no stage we have taken a decision to defy it. But the point that we're making is that when it comes to the governance of rituals and traditions in South Africa, that is a function of the institution of traditional leadership. The role of government is to create guidelines and regulations, which the government must then put those guidelines and regulations into a gazette. So we are very clear when it comes to that. We cannot afford a situation where the government sitting in Pretoria or Cape Town would be given an authority to say it administers rituals and customs and traditions of a people. That will be a, a, a recipe for a disaster. Allow the institution of traditional leadership to do this because it is the institution of traditional leadership that is the custodian and one and only of traditions and customs. Government is the custodian of guidelines, regulations, and the entire regulatory framework of the governance of these matters. So for compliance purposes, adherence to these regulations, that's, that's what government comes into the party. So indeed, I want to refute what the Honorable Obed Papela says that we made careless statements and unfortunate statement. It is our president who spoke to this matter and he was very clear. We respect the government and we work with government and we want to continue to cooperate and work to government with government and ensure that our rituals are respected. On that point, Chair, let me emphasize that we would like a situation wherein, actually, that every time there's gonna be a, an initiation season, the government must take that initiation season very seriously because the rites of passage from boyhood to manhood are national rituals. We expect the president of the country every time when we are about to observe that season to make a national statement to that effect, to register to the nation that this is one of the most critical rituals that is old as from time in memoria. To say to our people, they must observe, they must do this with respect, and they must ensure that all the regulations that are put in place under the stewardship of government and all the administration under the leadership of traditional leadership must be, ad must be observed and must be adhered to. So that is what we, we, we want to see happening. Secondly, Wasno Banyane speaks about the under support that we are getting when it comes to initiation, which is true. Given the fact that some people are eager to take their children to initiation, for the summer season. We are saying to government, they must also avail resources to that effect for the poor of the poorest. We cannot afford sanitizer, as well as masks, as well as any other things that are required for ensuring that we adhere to the COVID regulations. We want therefore 
that support to the initiation schools. You give the support to the modern schools by providing PPEs and sanitizers and water. Do the same for the traditional initiation school. Bring the resources, even bring food for that matter. It is very important that we do so that the children, when they're in the initiation school, they eat good food, healthy food, nutrition, nutritional food. We need that. It's very important that a progressive government does exactly as I say. Now, um, uh, 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 the Honorable Obed also spoke about the 60 million multiplied by seven or nine. Look, Chair, we are saying that uh, the KZN government as a provincial government is doing a good thing and it's a good example wherein we can go and uh, benchmark with what they are doing. But we are not saying that it should be 60 million across the board. We, we are saying it must be equitable, it must be proportional because the issue of provinces to us is neither here nor there. We are a national government. The fact that uh, in Limpompo, it so happened that uh, the king of Papedi is located there and the king of Venda is located there. But it does not mean that all Abapeti are in Limpompo. The Abapeti in Gauteng, the Abapeti in Pumalang, and all of them, they pay allegiance to that king. The same applies to the king of the Venda, the king of the Tosa, the king of the Tembu. We are a national country and people are spread across the country and they still pay allegiance. So we can't really be, we can't petify this issue of the location in a particular province. And I want to underpin that Jefferson by saying that kingship and kingdoms are a national competence. It is the national government that must actually create a framework. It can be relegated to an issue of the provinces. The provinces are just giving support in addition to what national needs to do. So therefore, I think we are very clear on what we are saying there. So lastly, the DG has answered our questions quite very great here. He has actually responded to our presentation and I'm very much impressed. But I must say that DG, you just uh, fell short of telling us about uh, championing the issue of ensuring that we have a budget for that department so that it can be a working department. The department, as I say, that uh, its bill, its budget is uh, just about the wage bill. We need programs. We need programs uh, which are very clear in terms of giving support to the institution. And the department must coordinate the work which is expected to bring service delivery uh, to the entire landscape of the institution of traditional leadership. The meetings with Contralesa and EC must happen at least once a quarter. And that must be a practice. It, 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 it has been happening all along and it must not be stopped because a good practice, it empowers the department. It makes it easy for us to even go together to treasury to say we need resources in order to be able to turn the corner and transform the landscape of our rural communities. So when we are not meeting, we are actually planting a very good opportunity for us to do things together and ensure that uh, we transform the landscape. Uh, I hope that uh, Chairperson, in that way, I have answered the question, uh, including the issue of initiation, because initiation, um, like I say, we don't want people to revolt against us. We don't want people to defy us first and foremost as the institution of traditional leadership. All we are saying is that let's make an enabling environment for those that it is critical for them to actually take their children to the mountain in this summer season. We must actually, and then we will come together and work together as the institution of traditional leadership, Department of Health, COCTA, police, and, and ensure that we work in unison and, and, and coordinate that work and prevent any calamity from happening. Thank you very much, Chairperson, for the opportunity. Thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, General Secretary of Contralis. Uh, I omitted you, because ne? what happened in terms of I, responses? I don't know. I, I, I gave. You, you gave everybody an opportunity to respond. Yes, and, and I wanted okay. to finalize this and touch on. Okay, sure.
proceed. No, thank you, Honorable Chair. Um, I th this platform is exciting to us. Goba abaneng be to the strong goodi nasek numbuso we neng. Gwangati wenze lwe ukaita ukos. Um, si gucho logu che goba na utala i imteto emneng e pasiswa. Um, a iskelepi. Eh, Simakosi, I scale this Baban Robanzi. Um, now Dala, a now Lalo Deputy Minister J. Uti Ama provinces, a my colleagues work on our chair, are not supporting Umteto M. Deusna, the Tinas Makos with Kazuberek. So to us, it tells us Uti a space say to Esamakosi, Embus and Lo, Ambursizan, but Navaniga was Ambuspet. And the parliament, the Ilalela Labo, Abanga Funu Kos. Of which is something Engas Party good because uh, I'm a traditional, if it's traditional cost bill, if a reg is was with this Nati government, Uptilang issue initiation. A Gunaban Respabona would buy a less and Guzukina Gufe Aban, but we can't do anything because Umte to also made with this Nawazu blow with this very kind and endless young and so. Yeah, my colleagues. Wakoche Amanya Ayas Faila. Ayas Faila because if you look at Tilo Ngapambilin, of course, the Bua Zukdila through a matrigal gods, Ukdila issue environment, protect our wetlands, protect our forests. So in Jabanu, you know, got the Vesas with the Gukiwa image, Eomile. But now people are just cutting everything uh, that is there because Amakos are not able to play um, uh, their role. Ngi worried that now the department chair, I'm going to get the school and school, and not necessarily dealing with the problem. I remember I came before your committee. It was not chaired by you, but this very same committee. This is about which is support for amenda the framework act. So the framework act, a base of fuma, which is what you are matricial concerns. So now the department is hiding behind. ETKLA. Uh, and yet, go pass to MT22 at the same time. Go pass to ETKLA, go pass to the framework, ne, ne, ne amendment, the framework act. That was allowing uh, ILO, the constitution of AMA, AMA traditional councils. So I, I am worried, uh, Chair, uh, the way ILO department and also department is not honest with you. Uh, but Chair, look, uh, they do not have the capacity uh, to assist the sector uh, because the answer you would do why we cannot with the ELO, we could not get a relief fund uh, because other structures that get a relief fund were the only ones that were not uh, considered for a relief fund. And ELO, the explanation that was given, I think it was too, yeah, because school, a school uh, that I honestly don't understand um, uh, as, 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 we, as we speak. So, Mdambe, Che, Uksa Mokdaja. Uh, areas uh, that we feel good may not have been uh, touched. Um, uh, when I issue a reason, I will just touch on that. You know, there's been responses, uh, but I will add with the portfolio committee if you can impress on the municipalities. What is was very good because if you look at Nama Nama water leaks, there are problems with water leaks in our in our areas, and we are losing a lot of water because of Ama Ama Alon Ama water leaks. Um, I also agree. Uh, we will also come up with other um, uh, ways to preserve Amanzi, like you know uh, what you call atmospheric water. There is a program as is a movie researcher. Uh, as a sector, uh, you know, that will deal with atmospheric water as a water source uh, that we are busy currently uh, researching as, as a sector. On the issue of initiation, I just want to add on the issue of initiation. If the uh, government does not decide, uh, Chair, uh, uh, because last year 57 boys died, it's a big number. That's a big, it's a scary number. And I am afraid, uh, Chair, 
that if we do not say anything uh, in terms of AMA regulations, uh, it, I've, I've seen how people in the Eastern Cape react. Uh, they are going to defy us and people are going to go to initiation. And we will not, because Askaga is prepared uh, to go and make sure that you know, it is a safe initiation. The situation must, might even be worse than what we had experienced you know, in, in other years. So I would plead, I would, and, you know, we wrote a letter to the minister uh, that you know, we met uh, as Jefferson's Forum, the house, the contra laser, and we spoke about this issue initiation. And Amakos or Eastern Cape were pleading with us, but if we do not say anything as traditional leaders, people are going to take this into their own hands and we will not be able to control them. So for us to be able to control them, at least let us start discussing with you. So now that we are not talking, no one, their AMA preparations are not moving as they should be. And we are also not providing AMA resources as we should be providing AMA resources. So I, I am worried uh, on that one, Chair, and I'm hoping that, you know, uh, uh, will move fast uh, to consult uh, with, you know, I'm, 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 I'm a cause on, 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 uh, on the issue, Chair, you know, on the issue, Chair, you know, on the issue, Chair, Sorry, sorry, in course, in course, it's a uh, okay, I wanted to ask the GS to mute his microphone. He has done that now. Okay, he was causing a disruption to you. Thank you, President. No, 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 no thanks, Chair. Ubaba Umbumza raised a very important issue. Abu Zaguti, the resources that we have been able to get from the Solidarity Fund, are they enough? You know, and is the agrarian revolution properly resourced? Uh, I can tell you right now, uh, Chair, Ubuti, I'm a resource lawyer. Um, Goba, uh, now Tala Ilo, Israel Directive Fund, um, it will only assist about 40, about 55,000 Yabandu, uh, examen with each Um, and you are trying to address AMA problems, Yabandu by 26 million, uh, so on 100 million. So that might not uh, work, but again, as a sector, U Princess did say that, um, uh, she decided to adopt a model a concept, SCB is a developmental monarchs. It was a concept that was crafted by <laughs> the current acting Jefferson way, Western Cape, that as developmental monarchs, uh, we have realized that we are on our own, Chair. Uh, that when we are on our own, uh, as Amakos, we need to think out of the box. So we are thinking out of the box. We are inviting external partners. Uh, we've had presentations from over DBSA of which we want to partner with them, Baskeleb or Financer, some of the programs in rural areas. So we'll be meeting Abu Sifa. Uh, we've started our own private entity uh, in the name of URK, where we hope we would, uh, with, you know, Amakos will be in business uh, just for the sake of their communities. With the dividends that we'll make from those businesses, we will then try and resuscitate the economy in, in rural areas. So we are going to have a strategic planning meeting. Uh, and a meeting that is going to focus on resuscitating the economy in rural areas. We've spoken to Deputy Minister Papel and we said, DM, all those ministers or Deputy Ministers that are within the economic cluster, can we have a meeting with them? Sibache Elitin has presented our, we've already worked on a program that we call Invest Rural. I think it's, a, it's almost a 300 page uh, document that covers everything that has to do with rural areas from infrastructure, uh, how we feel with our housing uh, should be financed in rural areas, um, how uh, industries are supposed to be structured in rural areas, how are we going to implement the agrarian revolution. So we are creating AMA packages where we feel good in a conference that we call Invest Rural. Uh, AMA investors will be uh, given AMA packages so that they can see if by a um, uh, in a village called Mpunzan. Our opportunities are called Mpunzan. So we'll be providing our own areas uh, through this uh, research document that we've been working on for the past uh, eight months. Uh, uh, on that program. So we're going to discuss that from the 30th until the 5th of December. We are having our own meeting. Contralesa will be part of us. Uh, in that meeting is the strategic planning house 
but we are also remodeling how the house works, where we are not going to listen to big English and all those from uh, government, uh, because of rural development and all these other departments that are supposed to be assisting us. Uh, the senior officials, they speak a lot of English. Um, arts and culture and all those. So we don't want to speak English anymore. Uh, develop in rural areas. And I think that's, that's what we've decided uh, as a sector to do. And we're hoping uh, we'll show you results, uh, Jay. And I'm, I'm happy that uh, you are very close to this committee. You are close to the sector. So we want to show you on our own, uh, we can change the trajectory uh, without assistance from anyone, uh, because we believe we'll do, anybody that wants to assist us will follow us, uh, will come on board whilst we, whilst we are working. But we're doing our own things, we're doing our own research, we're bringing our own uh, broadband infrastructure systems. So we are covering everything uh, Chair, that needs to be covered uh, that will assist towards development uh, of, uh, of, 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 of an area. So I'm a MOU's way to, uh, they are just paper. Uh, they are, you know, yeah, they're just paper. The only uh, department as ever can put an ad, the department, the social services. All other departments, see I call it now, uh, but um, talk away to is not going uh, anywhere. Things are moving extremely, extremely, um, extremely uh, uh, slow. So I would plead, we've been pleading with the DM, with the DM, uh, maybe in your capacity as a deputy minister, all these other departments is number MOUs now. Why can't you call their deputy ministers? And maybe, you know, if Singapore on the bigger people, the ministers, maybe let's look below the ministers. Maybe something can come up, you know, where we work with these uh, deputy ministers. And we've started pushing the deputy minister as well, Naibu uh, It is his responsibility to create those relationships. So we are pushing him and we are holding him uh, accountable uh, as a sector. I think, you know, towards uh, my conclusion, Jay, uh, there was a question that was asked around uh, the, the monies that we are collecting as a sector. What is the, because TKLA uh, says that we must be audited. As much as uh, the current legislation might not be talking about a full audit, traditional council accounts are audited. I can tell you for a fact that, you know, my traditional council, uh, our accounts are audited by the Department of Cogta and they know uh, what we are receiving, receiving and what we are spending uh, as a traditional council. But the unfortunate part is Basniaza, the Basniaza under 150,000 per annum to take care of the whole staff and to pay for AMA, uh, AMA overheads uh, with department. And I know, Chair, uh, even Labe Parliament, 150,000, so they are giving us 850,000 to cater for everybody in, 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 in that office. Uh, you have court members, you have, so if you look at your staff of people that we pay, it's 62,000, that we must pay. And all that was coming from the 150,000. So now we ended up taking Imali Yamastens, Yabandu Nangabalo, Bakaramastens. So now if we are saying, no uh, different HODs, uh, treasure, rebens and mezan. You know that will be the talk uh, of uh, of hundred years because DG came, he found these problems, uh, and they are still discussing the treasure. He, you know his term will end. He will go. Another DG will come and still talk the same language and still say the same things. So that's why I'm saying he needs to be honest and tell us his frustrations so that we can help uh, with the frustrations and, 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 and try to push for a capacitation the department. This department is not capacitated and he's frustrated as the DG because he's unable to do his work because you know, the department is not funded. So I think that's what I was hoping I will hear uh, from, from the DG that we could not do A, B, C, and D because we did not have money. <laughs> you know, simple. Uh, and, and then uh, we can see uh, how we we should um, uh, we should assist the issue of disputes chair. Uh, if we can deal with the issue 
yama pensions and um, yama pensions or my traditional councils. You see, when I pass on as a traditional leader, uh, the successor takes over. So the family that I had, uh, sometimes you find that I have more than one spouse. So the family that I had, the children that I had, do not have any other source of income or support. And my the one that takes over, now he's got his own family. So normally what happens is they start fighting this one that is taken over because there is nothing uh, that the family has. But if there was a pension or there was something that uh, people get, uh, the family that the family gets, at least uh, the queen uh, that is a widow will then be able to take care of Philo. But because uh, those mechanisms, uh, they are the biggest root cause uh, of the disputes. Uh, I was chair in Pumalang at some stage with 60 traditional leaders, and out of the 60, there was almost 40 disputes. And the, those disputes, the biggest problem was resources. Uh, because when uh, the income goes pass on, and the successor takes over, he is responsible for his own small family, and everybody else starts fighting the person that that has succeeded, and that uh, normally spirals uh, to the community. But we have AMA disputes and resolution committees that we've set up in different houses that are dealing with these disputes. But all of them will tell you what is the biggest root cause is this issue that uh, we need to deal with. And I think uh, as a sector, we are coming up with our own ways of dealing with them. We've, ever, we've now ended up having to buy our own insurance company, trying to come up with our own insurance schemes that we are presenting to the departments and hoping that uh, they will help us uh, as a sector. So we are starting to move away uh, from a dependency syndrome and going back so that's what uh, we are trying to do um, uh, as a sector uh, we are trying to uh, do things uh, on our own um, the, the, the last one uh, uh, Chair, uh, it was answered on the DDM um, I, I for one uh, I believe that uh, the district development model is a good model. Mara angaga we we internalize the angaga we use this as an no no role yeah me because in Gilale it's because in Sengayas because you know he represent but we still that's why you don't even see um, in our report uh, where we we talk a lot about it because we still have not yet internalized it. We still don't understand it properly, and we still believe that you know uh, there must be more consultation uh, to the sector on the uh, district uh, development model. Uh, on the money that we got from the Solidarity Fund, there was a question that we wanted to know: you, uh, how many beneficiaries uh, are there uh, on the food parcels? Chair, seven hundred twenty thousand people are going to get uh, those food parcels. So if it's twenty thousand. Uh, it's 14 million divided by 20,000. It comes to almost 700 rands. Uh, so, and that was total almost 700 rands. Guy too, it will pay per family. Uh, and then on on the issue, yeah, you know, 100 million that we are going to get. I think there's going to be about uh, 55,000 people that are going to benefit. Uh, in fact, yeah, no, it's 45,000. So I'm making a mistake. It's 45,000 people that are going to benefit because it's 880 traditional councils where in each and every traditional council, 57 farmers or, or smallholder farmers uh, are going to uh, be benefiting from that. So we don't have agencies. If it's 100 million, every cent of that 100 million goes towards Abandu, Esokzama, which is Sibakhelepe. In a nutshell, um, that's, that's what we are doing. And that's uh, the response that we are giving as a sector, Marasya Togoza Chair. Uh, the next uh, visits is an traditional council so that in Ibone Uguti, Siber Kajani, Nemtak, we are traditional councils, Nama programs, and Zoma traditional councils, no one on a physical. Nasiti Amakosens are local, we are willing, we want to take you there so that you are able to fully understand uh, what the sector is about. Uh, thank you so much, Chair. Thank you. Um, there are still issues that the department was supposed to respond to. 
uh, which I didn't see it coming as part of your presentation. This is coming from our meeting of the 18th of uh, October. There was the issue around the resolutions emanating from the dialogue for women in traditional leadership, which was reportedly held in Mpumalanga, and also the gender-based violence uh, 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 dialogue that was held in Lipup. Uh, we wanted to understand the resolutions, what were the DG, DIPOFA, including uh, the progress in implementation of those resolutions. The other issue that I also wanted to hear from you, DG DIPOFA, is with regard to the progress on the implementation of the resolution of the 2017 traditional leaders in Daga. You see, the problem of all these issues that are being raised is also by virtue that we, because these issues are not new, they've been raising that there were resolution out of that endeavor. I love you to just come and put a slide and tell us this is this was the resolution. This is how far we have got. Uh, we've gone to 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 resolve this issue. The other issue that came seriously out of our oversight was the issue around the uniform norms and standards regarding the participation of traditional leadership in municipal councils in terms of section, 100, section 81 of the structures. Act. That's the matter that is also still uh, outstanding. Then the, the other issue now that the uh, INCOC Matlango has raised, this issue of initiation school, because we're trying to throw it to the national house to say what message is the house communi communicating to those uh, traditional communities, in particular the Eastern Cape, who want to then resume the cultural initiation uh, schools, given the COVID-19 regulation. And I should believe then in Kosimatlangu, the national chairperson has proposed a very clear way forward to say, DTA, you must lead this process. You must start to facilitate that engagement because the reality that so many children died the previous year when there was no COVID-19. And if we are to fold our arms now and then we are not providing that leadership, that's the matter that one still feel is still outstanding. And then the issue that Contra Lesa is raised, it's very critical and very serious for the department. Ingos Nogonyane said it, not missing his words, to say it is solely based on that yourself as a department you used to have meeting with Contra Lesa the meetings that we have stopped holding with them. So these are some of the issues that I think, given the time constraint now, because we've exceeded our meeting time, we'll say because we've already invited uh, the traditional leaders to our meeting on the 27th, we'll ask the DG to prepare a presentation on those issues so that we are very clear, because we can't be talking one and the same thing, same time in memorial. We were briefed on the work of the uh, department when we assume office as the new portfolio committee. There were matters that we assume. Now we are here also almost two years. Same matters still coming. Uh, I think that it's high time we need to start to tick the boxes. What have we done? Uh, what have not, we not done? And then the other issue that I should think before I allow the other members to fold, make a follow ups. There is this process of section 25 that the ad hoc committee established by parliament that is moving around. Uh, what I'm seeing is political parties participating on those processes. I want to understand what has been your role as traditional leadership because we are talking about land matters. What have been your contribution? Are you making submission and what kind of submissions have you put into, into, into place? The other issue that one want to raise it, though you said your tribal visas are audited as you have indicated in the visit. There is this issue when we read uh, your quarterly reports, they don't include financial performance information for the two quarters that we've dealt with, and then including a progress on the spending of the allocated budget. Is there any reason why you are not reporting on these issues? Those are the issues that I want to raise. Otherwise, the rest that you have raised, that meeting of the 27th, as we'll deal with the CWP program, will put an additional item for the department to raise all these issues that I've raised, that the department still owes us a 
some responses and we thought tonight as we spoke earlier i was told that the department is going to address these issues emanating from our previous meeting that we held with them on the 18th of october can i check colleagues if there's any one of you who wants to make follow-up questions Oh. So, no, it means okay. no. No, no, I'm saying we, we covered. I, I think what I wanted to, to stress, it's in relation to the meeting of the 27th and to also say, I think it would also be nice if we were to visit one of these sites where these uh, CWP programs are taking place to see for ourselves whether or not indeed those tractors that they are referring to are indeed uh, there or not. Uh, so that when we make a resolution, it's informed on what is really happening on the ground, uh, because there has been a call for us to be a, a part and parcel of uh, a oversight visit in these sites, so that we don't rely on, on, on the desktop reports that are often uh, given to us as progress of work on the ground. Thank you. Yes, I should. Okay, we'll, we'll look at that, but given the term period, unless we both use the constituency periods, we'll ask the department to give us the sites where these projects are, and then we'll couple with the issue that Inko Simatlangu was raising to say us visiting also the traditional uh, Cancel during that constituency period. So that during that a constituency period, that can we can build it as part of our constituency program. We will deal with that. Okay. So the only issue that is now left for the national house is the issue of their participation in this ad hoc committee processes, and the issue of them not reporting on the financial performance before we close the meeting. If they can deal with that. The other issues, as I've indicated, uh, I hope, DG, you've been hearing these issues. These issues that have been raised of you also not raising, uh, being honest with your capacity issues, because I think we raised these issues. It's well and good to get clean audits years after years, but the actual uh, work is it actually happening, given what is raised here. We need to then uh, link the clean audit with the work on the ground. That's what we're trying to do here. Uh, we're dealing with the issue of the quarterly progress report. Uh, you could see uh, Matlangu and the issue of the participation in the section 25 amendments, the other committee thing. National House Chair Deputy. Chair or chairperson, I see. Um, um, yeah. I, I missed your question there. So you wanted to know who is going to participate uh, in which ad hoc committee? The, the issue, the, remember this parliament ad hoc committee dealing with the amendment of, of section 25. It has been all over the county. I've made some observation. I don't see the participation of traditional leaders. Safe to say there are various political parties that uh, are participating. I wanted to understand whether you are participating or do you, you think uh, you're going to make submission at a later stage as a stakeholder or are you a traditional leaders also participating in the, those processes of parliament? The second one was with regard to your quarterly reports that, the, that, the, that the, does not include financial performance information. Uh, so including also the progress on your spending. So that's a matter that you can also send it on the slide. But the one that is critical now is this issue of the Section 25 uh, adult committee proceedings. No, no, Chair, I think we, we have not been uh, participating, um, but we have a committee on land that will, will make sure that uh, we fully participate. I think um, I'll request my admin to find um, to get all the information uh, that we need in terms of uh, how we should be participating. But I believe that's a very important uh, ad hoc committee uh, that we want to participate uh, in. I think part of the resolutions of the Indaba was that uh, we are, the 13% is a, is a giveaway, but we are worried about the 87%. So 
Uh, that's where this 87% would be discussed and uh, would definitely want to make um, an input there. I remember when we were in uh, KZN, uh, there was an honorable member there uh, that is leading, I think, in this committee. And she had said that we need to talk, me and but we, we have not yet uh, spoken uh, with her. So we'll definitely uh, have to take that um, forward until yeah, and appoint a few people that will participate in that uh, program. Uh, on the issue of uh, financial performance, I think um, it might have been the omission from our uh, officials um, in relation to uh, our financial um, uh, information. So I would request maybe if the CEO does have uh, that information now to flight uh, the information. Thanks, Jen. CEO, are you ready to do that? Because I could say on the section 25 uh, at the committee amendments, it can be part of the slide that you can share with us on our follow-up meeting on the 27th uh, uh, chairperson that will assist. But with regard to, is the CEO ready? Do you have the figures at your disposal? Chairperson, uh, good evening. No, Chair, I request that we, we submit to you at a later stage. Uh, we don't have now at hand. Uh, Chair, it was an omission from our side. We really apologize for that. OK. Thank you, Thank you so much. Uh, in the absence of follow-up questions, Inkos uh, Nogonyane, the issue that we insisted that you must be part of the meeting. Our committee secretariat has apologized earlier in the morning because it has been our understanding that we cannot deal with the work of the National House of Traditional Leadership. Uh, we were supposed to have concluded the meeting during the day, but we said, let's try. And indeed, you did come. We want to appreciate that to again apologize to you for the mishap because our secretariat has admitted that it was a short a shortcoming on our part, which will never happen again. Hence, we are saying we are going to reconvene again on the 27th as we deal with the CWP remodeling. And then these issues as I've thrown them to the DG of DTA, he must make a presentation on all those matters as we've raised them. And then any other matter, then you will have also had an opportunity to now thoroughly prepare for the meeting. But we want to appreciate your attendance of this meeting. And then want to also thank you for having stayed with us until this wee hour of the night. Uh, what I can assure you, a uh, national chairperson, deputy chairperson, and all members of the National House, including the provincial leaders that are here, we, as a committee of cooperative governance and traditional affairs, we do understand what is our mandate. Hence, we said, we'll never treat you as a secondary child or whatever. What we do on the right-hand side, we'll do on the left-hand side. So basically, that's what we're trying to do. Like, as you have rightfully said, a chairperson, that we must visit our traditional councils. Definitely part of our oversight next time. It won't be just meeting with you in a, in a place that will be determined by us. We'll hold those meetings in a well identified a traditional council where in, we can also hold those meetings there. So it's our commitment on our side. And then I think on this other issue of the TKLA, including the Framework Act that has been amended. That's the matter, like I've said in my opening remarks earlier in the morning, it's very worrisome that parliament passes laws and then they get stuck somewhere for almost two years. That's the matter that one is also going to sharply raise now with the leader of government business because as for the processes of parliament, unless somebody challenges them, as I've said earlier, Parliament has followed all the due process. If it's consultation, it has been done. And then you've thrown it back to us again on this issue now. 
of our own colleagues who are now standing on the progress of the traditional leadership. I think as and when that report comes to us, I think we'll have to then engage our counterparts in provinces so that we understand that because we cannot be seen as lawmakers who are standing, then we, we are the ones that are standing on the way of this institution to flourish. It can't be, you are legislated by law and you are here to stay unlike us. You are not elected, you are born leaders. And it's us to give you that stature that you deserve. With these few words, I want to thank all of you. And then let's attend this meeting to remind the colleagues that we are meeting tomorrow at 9 a.m. to consider the annual report of the CRL Rights Commission. So let's meet at nine o'clock. Thank you for your time. The meeting gets adjourned. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Yes, see you wrong. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Chair Pese. Yes, yes, see you wrong. Where's Gigi? <laughs> Thank you, Gigi. He must come here. He must come here. <laughs>